Today we'll redraw this existing plan, create a detailed 3D model that will render, and place it onto a rustic page with all sorts of various styles. You'll see live design troubleshooting and all the techniques used to model it along the way. So let's get started. Alrighty, we'll kick off by dragging in our source material, which is a cool old set of plans that I've picked up from the special collections in the Newcastle Library. Um, from here, I'll show you the checklist that I've done up, which we'll be ticking off as we go through with the project. So we'll kick off by changing the background to yellow. We'll go to view and we'll go to grid editing. We'll go just here and then we'll go to background and we'll change this one to a cream. We'll go OK. And from here, we'll want to rescale the plan. So these plans are quite old, so they've, they've been done in foot. So if we zoom right in, let's go 14. We'll go control K which is going to resize. We'll click on one of the internal walls all the way to the other internal wall. So from here, from left to right, and 14 feet is 4.26 meters. So let's go 4260. Okay, there we go. All right, so we've got rescaled. I'm just going to jump back to my checklist. I've got the setting background to yellow, a little confetti. Hey, there we go and onto the next one. So walls, slabs, and roof. Next up is the walls. We've got our plan rescaled. And I'm gonna get this roughly sized in the center of the plan just here. So let's go ahead, we'll grab the wall tool. Press escape, add that one there. Now I've set up this one just a little bit earlier, just so we can skip going through setting up the wall. Um, it's gonna be 150 mil thick. So each of these is six inch uh, thick walls. So we'll go 150. And we're just going to trace around the external of the building. So starting here, we'll go one, 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 zero, enter. Now I went through these plans just before and I found that scaling off one dimension, other dimensions weren't quite um, correct to scale. So I'm just going to run with a rough scale on this one and we'll get the dimensions approximate as it's the main focus of this one is we're going to recreate it to make a cool looking 3d so go to 7000 and hopefully an isometric uh, cut through as well but we'll see how it travel so i'll bring this one on down connect it up with this one and there we go we've got the external walls done all right from here we can just use some of these walls to finish up our internal ones I'll bring this down to here. Let's make a little internal one just here. Now, what are we? 13 foot. I've basically just got a little Google uh, search here with foot to meters. Um, in Australia, we work with uh, the metric system meters. So it's yeah easier for me to fathom how to draw it in ICAD. In ICAD, you can actually change which system you use from imperial to metric. So it all just comes down to preference. Um, so let's go. 13 foot, it's gonna be 3.96 meters. So let's bring this one down. Okay, 3960. And the rest we're actually just gonna roughly eye in. So we'll go 3580. There we go. Let's grab this internal wall, drag it on over. There we are. All right, let's bring, turn off grouping. Oh, no. There we go. Turn off grouping, we'll drag this one on over just until it hits that wall there. I'll drag it up. Let's go 2000 and we'll trim off this little part here. Uh, let's drag this one down until we get 5080. Crop off this bit and we'll drag this one on through. There we are. So that's pretty much most, if not all, the walls done. Actually, there's a little wash house just up here. Uh, let's do this one too. So I'm just going to drag this one out. Let's go 3150. And we'll drag it across as well and we'll flip the orientation of the wall and we'll go four six five zero and we'll finish that one up cool so let's check our checklist let's go yeah so walls all right we've ticked that but we want slabs and roof so slabs and roof so i'll go to the slab tool actually let's check out how it's all looking in 3d so we'll go in 3d there we are, that's our 3D. I always like to check 3D, see how it's progressing along. Just, yeah, it's cool. From here, we want to do a slab. So we'll go, let's just go over the entire thing. Yeah. And from here, we'll drag this one back to there. With the slab selected, let's select it again and hold in the space bar for magic wand. 
get rid of this bit here. And we'll do the same just for this slab here. There we go. So we've got our internal slab done up and we'll also do some slabs for the verandas too. So that we get a bit of a guard line. Let's use a poly line. Drag the stack out so it's 2.2 meters. Drag this one on and down. There we go. And we've got a little guard line there now. So I'll hold it in space bar. There we go. So we've got the deck there. And let's get a deck going for the front as well. So 2450. Now that's what we're up to. We're going to draw in a line for the deck. Uh, 2450. Bring this one out. 13550. Bring it on up to here. 12500. And we'll tie that back to the house. There we go. We're done. We'll select the slab and we'll place this onto the deck. We'll grab this one and we're just going to use the, what is this tool called? Subtraction from Polygon. We use this one and just subtract it from there. There we go. So with, with that, with that, we've almost got our slabs done. Let's get this one done here. This one, it looks like it's done this area here as well at the top. Let's just delete that one. So I'll just use the cut tool to snip off that part. And we've got the stairs, but the stairs we've got later on in the checklist, so I won't tick those off just yet. We've got them down here. So now this is currently covering our plan. So I'm just going to click these and send the uh, select the <laughs> I'm going to select the display order and send to back. All right, there we go. So we've got walls, we've got slab, we've got we haven't got the roof. So roof is up next. All right, let's go to the roof. From here, we'll select down. Bottom left, and we're going to put the geometry method to multiplane. This is going to automatically do it for us, which is going to make things so much easier. So let's go ahead, click that one down from there to there. Now, it doesn't look anything like what we want here at the moment, but the cool thing is we can select the roof and we can edit these polys just here. So it's more tailored to what our roof form is actually going to look like. Let's pull this one on down and adjust it here, bring this one back. Now, it's a bit hard to read because we can't see through it, so I'm just going to turn the cover fill to transparent. Hey, that's so much better. Okay, all right, so let's have a look at the roof form. Bit of an interesting one. Now, this one's pretty much got zero eve, so let's take our eve dimension and turn that to zero. Looks good. For the most part, I'm trying not to zoom in and out because it's a bit disorientating, honestly. Um, if you're just watching a video, it's on zooming in and out while well, they're trying to do an IQ cat thing. Let's take a look at the roof. Okay, so what I think is happening here, we've got two different roof planes. We've got this primary roof plane here, which is set higher. The pitching point is higher for this roof here than this roof here. So this one's lower by, I'd say, almost three to 500 mil. Um, so let's actually do this uh, and bring it back in line with this one here and simplify the roof form just there. Let's adjust this one over, say 1500, and have a look see. So these lines just here, these all re represent the roof. Now, typically on more contemporary mod uh, like contemporary floor plans, they're done as dashed, uh, but on here they're done just as regular regular lines. So what I think this is, if we were to decipher it, each of these roof planes is pointing down. So if I'm to grab a polyline, I'll just exit out of the roof tool here for a second and we'll go one with an arrow just so we can kind of represent what the roof looks like. We'll point the arrow the other way and I'll turn this to a nice bold color. Let's go a red. Then we'll bring this one on down and we'll point these in the direction of what the roof planes are doing just to kind of break it down into its simplest parts so we can kind of uh, figure out what's going on here so we've got roof planes pointing like this and back in towards here oh man it's almost like they've made a box gutter all the way through there oh Let's have a look at the elevations and see if we get some more, some more information. So we've got an elevation to this side, 
we've got an elevation from the front and we've got one from this side. We don't have one facing back from here, which would be so useful to decipher what's going on with this roof. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have all the different roof planes pointing back in towards here. You'd just end up with a massive box gunner. How's that going to drain from here out to here? You know what? I'm going to draw it how it looks on there and we'll just see how the reform comes out on the 3D. We'll have a little look see. So I'll bring this one back. I'll show you what I think it's trying to tell us. But what I'm reading is really kind of bizarre. So let's go 5150 and let's add in a little node just here. 1500. Now let's bring that out a bit and we'll bring this line out this way. Let's it's not green with us there at the moment. So yep, we've got roof plane currently looks a little bit like, actually I'll just grab the roof, grab the roof, we'll cut it and we'll paste it on the story above. And then that way, if we go down, it's still showing there at the moment, but when I go to 3D, it's gonna be set correctly. Yep, that's better. Let's go back into our view, we'll go down and we'll have a look at the roof plane just here. See how it's pretty much the same height on each of the individual, how it's pretty much the same height on each of these elevations, here, here, and on this elevation here. <sighs> I'll show you what I think it means. So let's bring it into here, and then we'll bring this roof so it punches out this way. Let's go to here, have a look-see. Yeah, that's what I'm reading here at the moment. It's even telling me that I'll just draw it up how I'm reading it. This one here, and we'll bring this point out just this way. Mm, it's not green with me there at the moment. Let's try it a little bit shorter. There we go. And we'll bring this one out a little bit this way. Mm, the roof tool's not really green with me here at the moment. Let's bring it back. So that's kind of what I'm reading here at the moment, uh, minus this gable portion here. Not sure why that's popped up there. It's a bit odd with just a central, like, where's your water gonna go? If you, it's gonna drain off all these planes into this center point, it, it just doesn't make sense. So let's let's reapproach it. Go ahead, we'll just get rid of that roof. We'll use selection tool. We'll get rid of all these little reference arrows that we drew up before, get rid of them. We'll take the roof and we'll draw it up over this. We'll, draw, we'll just draw it up over this portion here. And again, we'll just turn this to transparent. From here, create another plane out to here. And with this roof and with this wall just here, we'll create another plane coming out this way. All right, there we go. All right, now let's have a look in 3D. Ah, it's not a long story, so I'll bring that up. I might even need to bring this pitching point up a little bit just so we're not getting these weird little um uh ridge ridges here uh valleys valleys here so i'll bring this up and just about here 350. i'll just zoom in just so we get this just right you shouldn't do it by eye i'll do it the right way so the right way would be to figure out what this distance is here 4.6 so that's four points that needs to be 4.6 so let's go four six hundred yeah, don't do it by eye. You'll end up with odd dimensions in real life. Um, and we'll just make sure this one's 4.6 as well. So we'll take off that 30 mil. There we go, that's better. So that leaves us with a little, with a little box cutter, but it gives us the roof plane uh, that it looks like from the elevation type view. So it's a relatively low uh, roof profile. Instead of if it went over the whole thing, it'd just be massive. So if we took this, we'll consolidate it just for a second, just so I can give you a gaze. So yeah, it's gonna be a much, much higher point, which honestly I don't mind the look of really, but we're going for the style. We're going to match up what it actually looks like on the plans. So we're going to go with a box cutter on this point just here. That will run out to a little roof just here. Cool. So we've got our first roof. I took a bit of doing, but second roof, I think is going to be much easier. So we'll take this one just here, draw it over here. Let's go into our 3D. Now, Let's go into our plan view again and let's see how, because this is all done to scale now, um, our elevations should also be to scale. 
We've got some uh, heights just here, so we can double check. Always a big fan of double checking. So that's going to be 12 foot. So 12 foot, three, six. Let's double check our measurement on Googs. Let's go 12, it's three, six. Perfect. Yep. So looks like it's a scale. That's good. Let's bring that back over there. All right. So if this is two scale, then we can figure out what height this roof here is going to be. So let's bring this one on down. 600. Yep. That sounds about right. So we'll go 600 lower for this one here. I'll just do it in 3D. Let's go 600. There we go. Now for the roof plan itself, let's just go back over, pick up the roof and we're going to drag this point of the ridge using this part of the tool and we'll drag it until it clicks and essentially turns that into a gable. So it's just kind of come back into um, this part of the roof here. And from there, I'll just want to bring that one back so it's essentially in line with where this uh, roof finishes because it's got zero eave. Uh, for that other roof, I'll make this one zero eave as well. So let's go to zero. It's going to ask if I want it for the custom plans. We'll keep it custom. Ah, no, that's for the back portion. So we'll apply change to custom as well. So uh, it'll mean that back one as well. Yep, changes. There we go. And then we'll just want to bring this so it's... Ah, now we forgot to turn this one to zero. So we'll turn that one to a zero eave as well. Yes, that's looking better. All right, cool. All right. 600. Now, uh, the mistake I've made here so far, I haven't actually set the height of the walls yet. So I should have done that earlier. But in my notion, I've just written myself a little note. So they're 12 foot ceilings, which means they're 3.65. So I'm just going to set the height. We'll just go into here, right click, we'll go story settings. And we're going to set this one 3650. And we'll set this one just to 10,000 for our server height. I could set this to zero as well. Uh, okay, let's let's just set it to zero. There we go. Uh, no, 10,000. 10,000, yes. Three, six. And it's going to be, I also set in my notes that it's from the ground. Uh, I counted the rises on the plans. I'll show you that in a sec, how I came up with that. What the actual height from the deck to the ground is and from the ground up to, uh, from the deck up to the ground floor. So uh, let's skip ahead. So that's going to be, uh, 900 and we'll go okay and that should bump things around a little bit there we are we'll take this one and we'll set its height so it's zero we want as many of these things automatic as we can so we'll go uh, the height will go zero and then we'll bring this one down 600 there we are cool now I'll just take a portion of that and bring that into that roof there in a second so that's set to zero these are ah, okay the walls we need to set those to Three six five zero. Yep, so they're all set to the right height. What you should probably actually do, select all the walls and we'll go linked to the story above. So we'll go reframe. We'll go okay. There we are. And because they're already set to the right height, it's all good. But automatic as much as possible. So if anything changes, but anyway, getting a bit caught in the weeds there. So uh let's check out what our height uh, our pitch for the roof is. So we'll go back into the 2D. Uh, we'll go down to the ground floor. Oh, it's disappeared. What's going on there? Ground floor proposed. There we go. All right, cool. So we wanted to find out the roof pitch. So we'll go to these drawings here, grab the polyline, we'll zoom right on in, and then we'll select here and here, and we'll use this polyline. We'll turn up the outer head just so it's a little less distracting. We'll select the angle dimension. Let's see if I've got, no, I haven't got a favorite set in this project. So let's just select these two points and see what happens. Hey, 31 degrees. All right, so we've got a 31 degree roof pitch. Let's select both these. Go 31 and we'll apply these to the custom plans. Yep. Ah, oh, no, actually turn that off. We'll select these and we'll go 31 degrees and we'll go keep custom and I'll keep this uh, gable end that we've got here and we'll go okay there we are but I'm um, starting to look a little bit more reminiscent of the style that we're going for um, once we get the bullnose roof on there it'll start really uh, kind of getting that ye olde style on there um, for these slabs this one's going to be 800 I'm going to reduce the height say minus 100 there we go and this one here oh, 
is going to be 900. There we go. This one is just going to be dead flat on the ground. I'll set up the site mesh in a bit, just so that that's all. It looks like we've got some ground underneath it. All right, let's grab that back wall just here. I'll slice that one off. I'll grab that and we'll go minus 900. Minus 900? Yeah, minus 900. Because that's a little washroom just out the back. Now, what I'll actually do is I'll unlink this one now and we'll go 3600 just for the time being. We'll check out what the scale is on the drawings. Let's go back and have a little look see. So what's our height? I'm pretty sure this is a skillion roof at the back, 3.5 meters, all right. 3.5 or 3.6, pretty close, pretty close. There we go. Uh, this roof, that's killing me. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go connect, solid element operations. We'll go operator and we'll select, you know what, let's select all the walls. We'll go target, we'll go subtraction with upward extrusion and execute. There we go, got it. I've done that too many times. All right. So, to get a bit of a look at what we're looking at, that's, that's coming along. The roofs are pretty thick, they're thick roofs. So, let's thin those up a bit. I'm gonna guess 200, let's see what that looks like. Let's have a little look, see what we've got there. Yep, about 200. Yep. Uh, now we're going to do, while we're doing the roofs, let's have a check on our checklist, ridge capping and gutter and fascia. I've got that later on, so we can do that later, later. Let's exit out of that. So we've got clear screen, a look, see back. Let's go into our 3D again. Yeah, we need to fix up this roof and put a skill in for this one just here. So back to the 2D, grab this roof, and we're gonna create two points just here, and one here as well. I'll pull this back and just see if it keeps the custom plane. Oh, no, it's not. All right, let's approach this a different way. So what I'm going to need to do is give it an Eve offset, let's say 100, and then, just take these points here, bring them out, and then bring this roof out to here. Yeah, let's go 1400, 12, 1300 from the center point, 1300, and then bring that one up there. Let's try that again, 1300. Bring that one up to there. Oh, come on, that pallet, why? Why I was in the way. There we go. Bring that to there. We'll click. Click again. There we go. Got him. Now we'll slice that off. We'll mirror this right around. And we're going to drag this roof so that its little individual elements all match up with that. Let's zoom on in. Pull this one to here. We'll pull this one to here. Oh, why didn't that line up? Bring that down to there. Yeah, that lines up. Bring that one down to there. All right, cool, cool. Now, if I go into the 3D, yeah, there we go. So that's gonna be into that roof plane there, which is what we're looking for. There's a massive gap there. We're gonna to have to fix those up. It's an iterative process though, iterative. So we're getting closer and closer as we go. We've almost got the roofs done. We've almost got the walls done and the slabs, so we're getting there, we're getting close. Hmm. Now, we're going to want to reduce the eave, so we'll go back to eave offset. Ah, no, it's not gonna let us. Drats. That's all right, we'll just pull these in manually. There we go, and this one too. Let's bring you in, nice. All right, let's check if we're still recording. Let's see how, oh, half an hour already, oh my goodness. All right, time flies when you're Having fun. Let's go connect, solid element operations, target, operator, subtraction. Which subtraction do we want to do? Subtraction with downward extrusion, execute. Yeah, all right, we got some clean lines. That's what I like to see. Uh, but we've got something going on with our roof just here. So let's go back in and see what's happening. Ah, this roof, this, this wall is being cropped by the custom Eve that we've given. So let's bring that in. 
Yeah, that's better. Cool. Now we'll want a skillion just on this one here. So we're going to go back into 2D, we're going to select our roof. We're going to go to single plane. Select this top part, bring it on down and make it face this way. And we'll bring it up just to about there. Now what I've noticed is it kind of almost looks like it's parapet. So let's take another look at the plans again. Mm, yes, so we can see the roof here. We can't see the roof here. So to me, that tells me it's a skillion facing down that way, um, which is what we've got drawn up here at the moment, which is good. And it looks like this part's parapet. I'm gonna go ahead and guess, yeah, that looks like it's, uh, it is a parapet as well. So let's bring this one in from the start as well. Let's go back into our 3D. Now, I'm going to reduce the pitch to say five degrees, which is roughly minimum for like a custom orb type of roof profile. We're going to go, so this one's reduced, say another 450. Let's see what height it is off the drawings. Let's see. So it's telling us it's eight foot. What is eight foot in metric? Let's go eight foot, 2.4 meters, 2.4, that makes sense. Oh gosh, just got rid of it, there we go. And we're back. Now, 2.4 meters, that's where we're at. So let's pan on around, bring this one down. We're at 3.9 there at the moment, so we can go 2.4, and we'll go to 4.50. Now what we can do is we can figure out the pitch from the difference of height from this point down here to this point up here. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, before I go too much further, I'm just going to delete off this template stuff that I go over here. This is from a previous file. Um, it's just handy to draw assets from previous uh, projects sometimes. That one is from uh, one of my template files. Bell on arcguide, arc-guide.com. All right, let's go back to floor plan. So what's the height difference here? 860. 860. 860. Let's go back to the floor plan for a second. So that the easy way we're going to be able to do this is by going uh, 860 high. So that's going to give us our height. We'll turn off the arrow for this one and we'll get our length, which is by the length of this roof with the inside of the parapet. And from here, we're just going to connect these two. We don't have to worry about Pythagoras and whatnot. We can just let the computer do the work for us. Go okay, this one just here, we'll drag it on back and put that one there. And just like we did for the other roof, we can now go angle dimension, click this one here, click this one here, and this one here, 10, almost 11 degrees. Let's round it up to 11. So that's gonna be 11 degrees for our little skillion roof just around the side here. So double what we had there before, 11. Let's give it, say, that 10.5. We won't round it up. We still wanna be able to flash up the top there if need be. Cool, cool. I'm gonna absorb the attributes from this using the eyedropper tool and inject it into this one just here. And that's gonna give us a deck just there. Man, it's all coming together. This is looking cool. All right, so uh, let's fix up the roof that we just mentioned before. Uh, we want this so that it's got a box cutter coming out through this section here. So to do this, I'm going to bring this in. Let's try out 600, 600 mil. 600, no, let's go 600 this way, then we'll try doing it. The multiplayer doesn't always agree, depending on how you're trying to edit the roof, so you just need to sequence it right sometimes. Let's see, 600. Oh. It's wanting to consolidate that front roof. Hmm. And we've got the zero eve here too, so maybe it's not the way we can approach it. Hmm. Actually, hmm, there might be a different way that we can approach it all together. Let's do our, our roof for the uh, deck just out the back here. Then we'll see if we can just get a single roof plane pitching back towards this veranda just here. Looks like they've got the veranda roof, so it's pointing down this way and this way. But again, it creates like a box gutter here, which it, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but uh, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Uh, at the moment, we're just gonna draw this from the edge of the um, slab just in below here. So I'm going to select the roof and we'll go from here and we'll create a roof plan like this. The reason I'm creating it so far back like that 
is just so we can get the hip portion uh, that's facing down towards that way. Um, and we'll be able to split this into individual planes. Uh, and we're going to make this work. So let's check out what it looks like on the elevation, just real quick. So that looks like it's roughly about a five degree roof pitch. Um, this one, I'm happy enough just to give that a go. From here, I want to split this into single planes. Single planes, split anyway. And delete these single planes. I've got a bit more flexibility for actually editing them. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now, this is accurate to what the drawings are showing with this roof plane here, but I'll show you why I'm going to delete it in a second. I'll go into 3D. Let's have a look at this. All right, so we'll bring this down to the height that it mentions in the drawing. So let's go back in through. The height that we've got here, I'm guessing 2.4. 2.3, come on, 2.4. All right, we're going to go 2.4. All right, so let's bring this down. Select all these roof plans. We'll turn on the grouping, bring it down. Let's go 2400. There we go. Cool. Now, the reason this might be a headache is we've got this roof just here. When water comes down from this roof plan, it's going to go into the gutter, which is then going to discharge onto this roof plan and onto this roof plan, depending on where it discharges to. But even if that's covered somehow it's if any water gets here it's just going to travel back towards this wall so my thought my thought is we get rid of this plane over here we ungroup it get rid of this plane and we crop this roof to that wall just there and we just extend that roof point there so that way we've still got that roof pitching down and now we just want all that roof water that for this area here to come down to this roof here. Um, water problems, they're such a headache. So let's try and avoid them where possible, even though we're kind of recreating this older type structure, but I know it's just baked into me at this point. We just got to get it right. So um, let's save, by the way, always save your drawings. Um, even though ARCHICAD's got a really good backup system, saving is, yeah, just saves you so many headaches too. All right fixing these roof plans that's going to be fun so how are we going to approach this we need to cover these two gaps here so i could just pull these roofs in say like this without automatically wanting to bridge that that might be we do that and then uh, pull it back there it's going to create a valley there a very small valley that's not very good Let's have a look at the plans again. Because worst case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these single plane roofs and I'm just going to use, most likely this is the pitching point. I'll use single plane, draw it along there. We'll pitch back towards here. We'll draw this point from this wall here and go a bit larger actually. And you'll see some see the method to my madness in a second i'll go 1500 there we go now we'll take this one to minus 600 now because the low low pitch we can bring this one up let's just go to zero for this one yep 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 yeah that's what i'm thinking okay the tricky part is this junction just here that's what i'd like to do i'd like to bring it back to here so that the junction here isn't as nasty. So that's all plain, relatively simple. It's just this last little intersection just in here. I'll just show you what it looks like when we've got this tidied up. So what are we at 170, we've got this at 200. So let's take this back to 200. Let's take it so all the roof plans match up at 200 actually. Oh, yeah, I like that. All right, let's go connect solid element operations. We'll go target, we'll take the roof, we'll make it the operator. We're going to do subtraction with downward subtract, uh, with downward extrusion. That's what we're looking for. We'll go execute. There we go. So we've got these valleys now here coming down to a gutter just there. You could continue this roof and just have a little a small box gutter here up against this wall. I don't like it, but instead of fiddling around, wasting too much time on the roof, let's just do it. And if someone decides, to, I'm, I'm thinking of this as if it's going to be actually constructed. What am I doing? I'm going, I'm going to be crazy here at the moment. So, all right, let's do that. Um, yeah. So two, four, 
That's about, say, 250. Let's check out our floor plan just to make sure that sits all right with what the measurement is just here. Yeah, almost 250. Um, so yeah, that, that pitch is about right there as well. Let's go back to our checklist and have a little look-see. Walls, yes. Slabs, yes. Roof, check. So we'll go that one and huzzah, we've got one checked off, cool. Basic site mesh, this one's gonna go so quick. Um, we're going to go to the site mesh tool, which is this one just here. Uh, we're going to site mesh existing and it's going to give us a warning here in a second. I'm just going to start drawing. And I'm going to go show layer and I'm just going to draw around the property. There we go, cool. I'm gonna select it and set it to back. Let's play on this in the back. There we go, let's check out our 3D. Let's, now, because I haven't set any points, it's not going to show up in the 3D. No, not a deck, a deck for some reason. There we go, that's better. So let's set our points for our site mesh. Let's pick up, there we are. Select one and we'll set them all to 10,000. Go apply it to all and we'll go, okay. Let's check out our 3D, double click. The layer must be turned off. So let's go to site mesh existing and we'll go, okay. Hey, there we are. Let's select it, let's delete this other one. Now, because it's on the wrong um, story, it's going to be showing up the wrong height. So let's select the site mesh, which isn't showing up there at the moment. We'll turn all layers on, turn that one on. And then we'll select, cut it and paste it down on the survey, survey layer, uh, survey story, which is a couple of stories down. I'm just gonna delete this one here, which is all just reference information as well. We'll go cancel for this little warning that's popped up. So I'll keep all the section markers just in case I want to use those. Probably won't, but always handy to have just in case. There we go. We've got our site mesh. Now, if we don't want it so thick at the bottom, we can just uh, do custom cut planes and I'll just bring it up from the bottom here like that. And then I would just go finalize. There we go. Cool. Nice one. So let's go back to our checklist. Basic site mesh, we'll check that one off. And hey, there we go, got him. Now on to doors and windows. Doors and windows, let's go back into our floor plan. Let's go back into our floor plan. Doors and windows. So go to our door tool. This is going to be an 820 door. So six, yeah, about six foot. So let's draw that one in. Oh, that's a cavity, that's a pocket door. Double select this one from the favorites that I set up earlier. Draw this one in. Ah, six foot hallways and it's a three foot door. So let's check out what three foot ends up being. A uh, foot is almost 30 centimeters. So three foot is, yeah, no, uh, 910. So it's not gonna be 820, it's going to be, let's make it a typical 920 door. There we go. And let's just do that to each of these different little areas just here. Now this isn't gonna show up a whole bunch on the three until we do the isometric cut through, which is gonna make it look real cool. Let's take that, is there a casement window? I think it's, oh wow. Okay, we'll have to check out what that is in there. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, okay, so those are double opening doors by the looks of things, just on this side here. Because this is, a, is this here is the front, this is the side. It's only showing one of these is opening though. To me, that looks like a double opening door out onto a balcony though, onto the veranda. So I'm just gonna do that as a double opening door. Going to go back into our door settings. Uh, I'm going to the doors. We we'll want a double door. Double door, double door, there we go, double door. Now I'll just select the doors attributes uh, before I go ahead and do that. Let's go inject those attributes. So then that way it should keep um, a lot of the different pens that I set up for it before, just so it doesn't start looking all funky. All right, let's go, okay, there we are. Now this one's 3.6, so 0. If a foot's 300, that's gonna be almost an extra 180 mil. So that'll be 1,100, let's go 1,100. Or what I could do, what I could do, I mean, it lines up there, but let's check and see what it looks like on the elevation. Yeah, 1150, almost, almost got it. Pretty close. Let's do that one for that one there. And the rest are double hungs. So we'll do the windows in a second, but let's just finish off the doors. Got another door just here, another door just here. 
one in through to the store and pantry. Very cool how it's all kind of segmented into these different areas, very different from the contemporary plans that you'll see today. Uh, we'll do one in through to the kitchen. Uh, the wash house doesn't even have a door. <laughs> it's um, just all open. And we have a door onto the front as well. Let's have a look at the front. Nope, that's a double hung. So uh, no access onto the veranda from this room here. So let's start getting our double hungs going. We'll go uh, to this one just here. Just gonna check and make sure the recording's still going. Yep, we're 10 minutes in. Yep, that's all good. Double hung, okay. We'll go into our windows. The historic windows, let's have a look. No, no, those look like double hung. So let's just type in double, there we are. Double hung, double window. We just want the single double hung though. Double hung window, this is our guy. We'll go, okay. No, three, six. So it's gonna be the same width as the door. We've got stamps on there, turn off the stamp. And I'll change these pens in a second. So same size as the door is gonna be 1100. So we'll go 1100, there we go. Let's try and get one about there. Draw that one out to there, we'll get one here too. It just makes it so much easier if they're all double hungs, which they are, have a look. Yep, double hung, double hung, double hung, double hung, double hung, double hung. Yep, all double hungs. And this one here. And we've just got a couple left to go. And we've got another one checked off. Now we'll need to change what the materials look like, but that's on my checklist too. So we'll slowly check them off as we go. Oh, one door I almost missed. So this one here, this would be just an opening in the middle there. So let's grab this door and we'll go to the door and we'll go empty door openings and we'll go rectangular door opening. We'll go, okay. We'll do this one just for here. We'll go, we'll bring it in and we'll just use the plan for scale on this one. So we'll go to 1350. Yeah, that looks about right. Cool. Uh, we also want two little side highlights here by the looks of things. So let's check out what our front looks like just up the top. Okay, just there. Hmm. So it's going to be a timber down the bottom and glazing the top. Let's see if we can find something similar in our, in our windows, like a fixed, fixed glass. Uh, let's go historic again, and then no, nothing historic. Basic windows. We'll go into this, and we'll see if they've got different styles that we can choose from. So long, we'll get fixed glass. Uh, bow and transom. Mm. Hangs. It's open. What's wrong with it for now? We'll come back to it. Let's make those small. So three fifty. We'll put that either side of the door. Yes. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Now they're not the right height. So let's get the height uh, correct for them. Let's go back to our plan. Check our scale. So those, these are seven foot, seven foot window. These are massive. So 2.2 meters. And the head height from ground is almost 3.1 meters. 3.1 with a 2.2. So let's select all the windows. We'll go 3.1 for the head height. So header to wall base. Well, that's 31,000. 3.1, there we go. And the height is what we want next. And it was 2.1, was it? 2.1 or seven foot. Let's check out what the actual measurement is. Seven foot. Seven foot is 2.1 meters. Ow. All right, let's select all. Two, one. There we go. Let's go back into our 3D. Check it out. Yeah. Our doors are tiny now, so let's select all our doors. I'm pretty sure all the doors are going to be the same height as the windows, so let's just go. Hold on, let's check it out. Let's see how it looks here. Uh, yeah, they, these doors are massive. There we go. It's got a transom up the top, top here. That's pretty cool. Oh, and that's like an arched archway in the middle. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, and we're going to have time to do that detail. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. 12 foot ceilings. Uh, I've got distracted. What was I doing? Doors. Yes. So the doors are, yeah, almost 3.1. 3 so the head height for the windows, 3.1. Let's do all the doors as 3.1. Select all. 3.1. And we'll go head to base as well, 3.1. Yep, cool. Now in 3D, they're all showing as open. So let's close those. Let's go fixture and fitting. Is that now? Where is the option to change how it looks in 3D? Oh, don't tell me I have to do it in 2D. Uh, that sucks. Uh, let's see if we can do them all at the same time though. Oh, there's no way. If I do it in 2D, surely it'll do it. 
No, oh yeah, okay. Let's undo that. Undo that. Let's go up top. Oh, it's killing me. I forget how you do that again now. The actual opening door. Maybe it's in our graphic in our model view. Let's check that out. Not my front there either. Oh, it's killing me. I'll make this full height for this one here. So we'll go three to one as well. Close it that. I'll make these the same material all the way down so that's siding. No, oh, we'll go through the sequence. I'm getting distracted. So select all these. Uh, I think I know what it is. Okay, since I've got the opening selected as well, since I've selected all the doors, if I turn off that, then it's going to allow me to actually select the options that I need. Let's check it out. Yeah, I've got way more options now. <laughs> there we go. Oh, simple, simple mistake. Let's go zero, go okay. And that closes all of our doors. Then to change the materials, we can just go to document. Then we'll go to create imaging surface painter. Bring our surface panel over and we'll go to pine or we'll go to wood. Uh, and let's go to a pine and apply that to both of these. Oh, those aren't selected. Okay, let's just select these ones here. There we go. Exit out. Yeah, it's a bit chunky. Let's select it and change it instead of just that plain flat. It's a bit Gnarly, uh, we'll deselect this center one just here. It's always a bit of fun sometimes selecting the nodes. We'll turn that one and we'll go in and we'll change what the actual face of the door looks like. I should just memorize these one day where all the different parts are. Hey, there we go, door leaf, that's what I'm after. Yeah, we want something a bit more stylish. Bit more reminiscent of the era, just at least while we're getting it going. We'll go, okay, I didn't change anything. <laughs> but if I flip that, no, even if I flip it, nothing. Okay, all right, we're getting distracted. We need to get more, more stuff done. How far are we in? Oh, just another 20 minutes, that's fine. All right, well, let's double check. I think we've got all our doors and windows done. I really don't like it pen colors but again that's distraction so let's put that aside for the moment yep that's all our doors and windows done so let's go to doors and windows check that one off and we've earned confetti hey there we go uh trim for the cladding okay so i think for this one i just mean uh these external trims just here those should be pretty quick and easy to do what i'll do for those I'll just select a slab. Now this could come in the form of a bunch of different things. It could be two cladding uh, butting up to a block. Um, it could be uh, essentially the cladding and then the um, timber cut to what the grooves are of the cladding itself. But f for the sake of this, again, we're, we're just gonna get, do it to what makes sense for the size of our model. So we'll just go 50 by 50. Let's select that one and we'll drag this one out, say 10 mil. And we'll drag it out 10 mil here too. Let's take this into 3D. Go and we'll select this one and we'll drag it all the way up to under, underneath there. There we go. Yes. And we'll change this. Wood oak light. Yeah, okay, that looks cool. I like that. We'll just put that onto each of the corners. So uh, 10 mil, is it 10 mil? Yep, yeah, cool. Let's bring this one over to here. Let's go 10 mil go over to the edge of this one just here. Oh, actually, is this is there one here or would it be on the very end? Might just be on the very end. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's just on the end. So let's just zoom back in. Bring that one to the end of there and we'll just pop it out 10 mil. And is there one on the edge on the other side? Yeah, most likely would be. So 
Let's bring it out to here as well. 10 mil. We've probably only got another. Oh, actually, we've got a couple more. Let's do each of these corners. 10 mil. 10 mil. This one here. One there. Mm, my OCD is killing me a bit. I'm having a look at this wall just here. I want these walls, these internal walls to be the same. So let's have a look. It's 4.3 and I'm guessing this one's larger, 4.330. So let's bring this whole thing in 30 mil. I don't think it's going to affect anything. Let's go 30 and bring this. We'll intersect these two walls here. Intersect uh, tool is just up top there, that one there. So when you select two walls, it'll let you do it. Uh, and we'll bring this one back into. There we go. Ooh. There we go. Okay. Uh, and we'll intersect these two walls. I'll do it this way this time. There we go. And we'll bring this uh, roof in as well. There we go. And we'll do this whole trim just over here while we're at it. Let's go 10. There we go. Okay. So we've tidied up those walls and we've got those trims on the external. Let's have a look and see how it looks. Yeah, cool. Let's bring these down. Oh, what's up on our roof? Ah, oh, it's still there. It's just below it. Okay. There we go. I'll bring those down. Bring this one down. Yep. All right. So we've got those ones done. Go back to our checklist. Trim for the cladding. Check. Perfect. Nice. Uh, ridge capping, plus gutter, and fascia. All right, let's do that. Uh, now, our doors and windows just here. Um, because it's lowered down, we'll change the heights for these. Let's go to 400. Bring these down significantly. We'll go back to the full plan, just double check what this window is looking like. So the sill height's still the same as the other windows. So we'll keep the sill height the same. Uh, we'll We'll bring the head height down so it's the same as doors and we'll bring the sill height up so it's the same height as the other windows if we can get it to yep there we go and we'll grab the bottom and we'll just do this one so it's the same height as those yep there we are okay grab the floor let's do a solid element operation so this is the operator so this is the target and we'll go subtraction now this is timber wouldn't last very long in the ground depending on the climate so let's just go concrete the time being cool might even just be dirt honestly let's go earth brown that's earth and let's go back to concrete yeah there we go all right now roof we're after the roof we're going to do the roof we're going to do the ridge capping and all the other uh details of the roof ridge capping gutter and fascia all right let's do that now so we'll do this uh pretty easily just by selecting all these roots. We'll zoom back out. We'll select all the roots and we'll duplicate them over uh, to a measurement that we'll be able to uh, easily remember. So let's go 1500, uh, 15,000 I should say. Uh, let's take all these roots and let's turn them into single planes and we're gonna split them anyway. Now from here, what we wanna do is for each of these planes, we're going to want to insert them and create a duplicate while we're doing that. Um, typical uh, ridge capping, you're looking at about say 120 to 150. So let's just go 150 and we'll do that for each of the roof planes. So we'll go 150, 150, 150. So we're setting ourselves up here at the moment. So what we'll do is once we've got all these, going to use the magic wand to subtract uh, the other roof from it. So that way we'll just have the uh, the roof left that we need for the bridge capping. 150. Just got the roofs left. Doesn't take too long. Oh, I didn't put hold in shift while I did that time. It's turned out a bit shorter. Watch out for that. There we go. Just 
always holding in shift to make sure things are parallel, uh, 90 degrees, 45 or 180. Here we go. I didn't for that one, but that's because that's not the angle, so 150. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's go 150. Cool. We've got all those done now. So we'll select the main, we'll select the main plane, then we'll select the eyedropper tool, and then we'll subtract the other roof from it. But we'll come back through and we'll uh, drag this down. So what this looks like in practice, if we head on over and we delete this, it'll just leave us with essentially this here. Now in, I think it's the CI tools, uh, something like that, uh, you can uh, just do ridge capping much easier, more, more intuitively, but in the base ArchiCAD, um, this is pretty much the easiest way I've found to do it. Um, yeah, for, for most projects anyway, so. that one, delete that middle one, and we'll use that magic wand, and we'll essentially bring this one back over in a minute, and we'll overlay it over the original roof, and we'll just lift it up uh, probably like 5 10 mil, uh, and that way it's indicative and it just looks more accurate to what, we, what we're going for. Uh, we don't need this one down the bottom just because the ridge capping is on either side of the ridge and the valleys and the hips. Um, now, this one here, we're not going to have... Uh, essentially, you'd have valleys for that, but we're not going to go into the detail for this one. It's We're barely going to see it, honestly, no one there. So we'll just focus on the main ones and we'll go 150. Yeah. I'll select this one. One. Gosh, we're getting close. Oh, delete the wrong one. I do. And bring it back to there. Delete. Just like that. And we'll subtract it from the middle. Delete this one. Select. Delete that one. And delete this other one. that and that pretty much just leaves these last two roofs and we're pretty much there. Now we'll just need to crop off these bottom parts for a couple of the roofs um, just so we get them looking accurate. But outside of that, that's pretty, pretty much how we approach or how I approach uh, doing ridge capping. For most roofs it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Just this one up here. Just that one there, there, bottom, maybe two, that one. Cool. Let's take them all. Any that we've missed, we can uh, tweak and adjust when we bring it back over. So let's just group all these together. Uh, turn on grouping and we'll bring it back over to that 15,000. We'll go back into our 3D. Hey, there we go. Starting to get a bit of detail going. So let's bring this up, say, 5 mil. And we're going to set this as the target this time. This one as the target. Uh, all the other roofs. I'm going to select all the other roofs. Control A. And turn on grouping and deselect this roof. We'll set these as the operator. And we'll go just regular subtraction. And we'll go execute. Now, this is going to look like a mess when we get back to the floor plan in a second. Um, so I'll need to turn off the uh, floor plan display so it looks cleaner and clearer and so that only shows up on the roof plan for these uh, since we're not going to be editing uh, things on the roof again. So when we go to floor plan, let's go down. Yeah, you see all these lines. It's, it's me real messy now. So we'll head on back up, and since we've grouped things, it's gonna be really quick and easy to do. So we'll just go to floor plan and section, and we'll change it from all stories to home story only. It's gonna give us this warning, and we'll go continue. There we go. So uh, we'll go back on down. There we go, much clearer, much cleaner. Um, all done there now at the moment. Let's go back to our checklist. Bridge capping, gutter and fascia. So we need, uh, need to do the gutter and fascia. But before we do that, I'm just going to quickly change this so that it's just a clear metal because it's not going to have this corrugated pattern on top of the ridge capping. So uh, what do we got? Colorbond custom orb. So let's change it to corrugate cheap metal. No, 
we want it without the texture. We just want a gray metal nickel. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Oh, uh, no, that's more brown than gray, really. <clears throat> Zinc? No, that's got texture to it as well. Let's get rid of that. Iron's going to be too dark. Let's go steel. Closer. Closer. We'll deal with it for now. There we go. All right. Splatting is going to get changed when we eventually get to the materials, but um, yeah, I like it. I, I like seeing more and more detail evolve into the drawings as we go. Um, it's a feeling of progression. Um, yeah, it's satisfying for me. Uh, so let's get back to our list. Uh, gutter and fascia, that's what we need to do. So easiest way I've found to do this, if you don't have the CI essentials tools, is it essentials, whatever it is, um, we'll just go to a wall. Um, and I'll show you this right after a break, just so that I make sure that the recordings don't accidentally die on me. So let's just go and we are back. So we were talking about gutters, gutters and fascia. So to do gutters and fascia, we'll go to the wall tool and make sure that this one here is selected and we'll go, uh, which should be fine. I'll just go solid fill white. Um, you can set up your materials, doesn't matter too much, but what does matter is the height. So we're going to set the height. If the roof itself is 200, we're going to set this to 180 for the height, just 20 mil um, uh, lower than the actual roof shooting itself. Um, it's not official tolerances or anything like that. Um, and then for width, let's go say like 25. Uh, from here, we're just going to use the magic wand uh, and, and that's done it around the entire perimeter of the roof. Let's do that as well for the remaining roofs. This one here. For this one here, it's gonna be just easier to uh, draw it in manually. From there and drag this one on over and drag this one over to here. And that's all the fascia done. Let's go into 3D, check it out. Grab all of it and bring it down. Bring it down, say 20 mil. And let's change the material just while we're here. I am gonna change all the materials a little bit later, but let's go to steel. There we go. Actually, no, I think it might be timber uh, in the actual proper drawing. Yeah, it looks like timber. So let's undo. Let's go back to the timber. Mm, but I don't like that timber. Let's go to a different timber. Let's go to paint beige. Yeah, that looks a little bit better, I think. Oh, no, when you deselect it, I'm getting distracted. I'll try one more color. One more color. Let's go sand beige. Paint sand beige. No, it's not close, but we're going to roll with it and we'll just get the heights right. Gives it a nice little bit of contrast for us to work with anyways. Um, so this one here, let's drag this down. I'm bring 20 mil down from there. And we'll be layering up the detail from here. So we'll go 20, grab this one, bring it down, bring it down, this one here as well. Now I think I've lined that up with the, yeah, the butt, the, the capping. So let's bring that down an extra bit. Let's go 20. So that's pretty much all of our uh, fascia set up. So from here, <clears throat> we'll want to set up the gutter. Gutter, similar story. Uh, I'll check out the profile of what we've got in here. So it's not exactly like a quad gutter. What we can do is set up a custom profile. We'll want to do this using the line tool and I'll just trace around the gutter profile that we've got here and I'll trace that one back up onto here and turn that one back there and cut that one off. Okay, I'm gonna use the fill tool. I'm gonna to fill this one in and I'm going to copy this and I'll go to element attributes, then profile manager. Within here, I'm going to create a new custom profile and I'm gonna call this gutter uh, classic rustic. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Let's go that one. And then we're just going to go paste into center of the view and we're going to set the origin from the top of the gutter. There we go, like that. And we'll use it as uh, walls. We'll also do it as beams, just in case walls doesn't work out. And we'll save it. There we go. And we've got our custom profile. Pretty quick and easy. Um, from here, let's go back to our roof plan. So from here, we'll just, uh, oh no, let's save. Let's save, that's what we need to do. Haven't saved in a while. Okay, let's go back to our roof plan. So we'll go up. Uh, and up again. From here, we'll want to select our wall. And uh, what we want to do is select this third option across here, which is going to allow us to select our custom profiles. And we want to select the gutter classic rustic that we just set up. 
use we'll use the space bar to uh magic wand and draw that one in and see let's see if it's the correct orientation we'll go in yeah that's the correct orientation nice sweet on the first try pretty happy with that uh the materials are hideous so let's change these to something uh less oh, more appealing um let's change this to steel and we'll just link all those yeah oh that two there yes now let's bring that up say 25 halfway up through cool that's another bit of detail done let's go to our checklist we'll check that one off ridge capping yes got it yes and fascia yes all right confetti Chimneys, complex performance, more tool, uh, doing the two intersecting them. These are going to be a bit of fun, uh, these chimneys. I think if we go back into the floor plan view, let's just go uh, pan on over, we'll save, save our progress. These are very interesting. If they were just square, say like this chimney here, it's pretty straightforward. We can do a morph and intersect the two. Um, pretty straightforward, but because of the profile, because of this profile so see how it's wider here than it is here it's going to make it a little bit trickier so chimneys are up next so what we'll do we'll just zoom in and you know what we're going to take it a similar approach we're not going to do the morph tools we're going to do a custom profile again as well i think that's the best way to approach it yep so let's just go to our line tool again now we're not using spline uh, look we could we'll use this the polyline Typically use the, the line tool if you want to make pens, uh, particular pen line types. Uh, it doesn't accept the polyline for some reason. Uh, but I am usually a fan of using the polyline just because it links everything together. It's one clean line. It's nice and simple to use. Uh, what we'll do, we'll go through a trace. This is going to be probably not the most exciting part to watch, but I'll see if I can um, add any kind of interesting commentary over the top um, while I'm talking through this part. I'll scan back out. Oh, if you accidentally do a line too short, you can just hit backspace. I, I found that out about two years into learning ARCHICAD. There have been so many of those type of tools that I learned way, way too late in, like the Magic Wand tool. I learned that, what, like almost two years into knowing ARCHICAD? Uh, at such a tremendous time saver. Um, I, yeah, it's there's some tools you really kick yourself that you had picked up earlier in the piece, but you just have to pick them up at some point, I guess. So, um, all right, we've almost got this profile finished up and we'll draw it to there. Gosh, when you're getting close to the end of the line, if something accidentally happens, it'll kill you. Oof. Um, now, let's make this into a custom profile, just like we did for the fascia just before. We'll go to the filter, we'll fill it in, grab it, copy, uh, from here we'll go to element attributes we'll go to profile manager we'll create a new one and we're going to go chimney oh god spelling chimney go okay and from here we'll go paste into current location we've got this one now we'll want to set it so that the origin point is down the bottom left and we'll set this one as a wall again as a um, beam just in case we need to use that if there's elements that are intersecting that don't want to intersect and we'll go safe and let's exit out let's see how this looks let's go into our floor plan so these are our chimneys here this is where they are here so i'm going to line this up with the chimney just down here so we'll zoom on in if my computer can keep up yep we'll select a wall we're going to turn it to the custom profile that we just set up so this one here chimney I'm just going to give it a go. Wow. All right, this is going to be interesting. We'll make it a bit shorter, I reckon. Let's go 800 because we're going to need to bring it in. So let's go. Uh, so it's going to end up needing to be brought in, say, 230 and 115 that way. Let's have a look in 3D. Uh, let's bring it up, say, 5,000. So it's above everything else. Yes. Okay, the profile's worked out. So the correct portion is facing outward. That's what we want. Um, let's uh, bring this down, say, to about 4,200, 4,500. Cool. And we're going to bring this around. Yes, there we go. All right, we'll delete this original one that we just had set up a second ago. Delete that one. Bring this one back. And we'll massage these so it roughly uh, matches what this uh, is here because that's going to be our rough 
actually no let's bring this out to the ex the furthest extent on group and see what that looks like because this uh, that top groove might actually be in line with uh, it might be offset up top that's what I'm trying to say let's bring those out and we'll do an intersection with these here in a second and we'll go intersect I'm going to change the materials so it looks really satisfying if we if we nailed it let's have a look uh, we'll change this to let's change it to a beige as well sandy beige let's go to 3d oh yes cool oh that's cool oh man that's come up a treat oh, god i love it when it works oh that's ah oh, that's satisfying cool nice all right very happy with how it turned out uh let's go into the elevation and see how high it is actually from the ridge um i think it's significantly higher than what we've got drawn there at the moment so uh, let's check it out at the moment on the drawings 1.8 meters so let's pop back in let's grab the chimney uh, we'll bring it down oh, not too far off uh, so another 300 mil 300 higher I'm very happy with that that's turned out that's very cool because I, I can see how it's going to look when we bring the other one out there too um, if we select both of these and say uh, bring this one out over here and let's check that out yeah Oh, that's so cool. I love how the two the two profiles marry up together. Because let's say if we delete this one, then the profile ends up like that. But it pulls it around, so it actually uh, looks like a like the realistic molding. Uh, very happy with that. And we'll do a similar thing for this one here. Uh, we'll go through, draw up the profile, and I'll pretty much check us off uh, for the chimneys. So uh, let's go through and do that one now. We'll get polyline. And we'll draw this one in. But uh, let's see if I've got any stories to share about uh, other ArchiCAD experiences. I picked this all up, um, uh, the custom profile stuff um, and the morph tool stuff, probably in the first two years. The thing is, unless you have a particular use to learn something, it's, it's not really going to stick. Um, whereas I had a bunch of stuff that popped up that, yeah, I need to learn how to uh, come up with weird and uh, custom shapes. So. Yeah, it's lucky and that, that stuff sticks and it comes in handy in little random situations like this. So let's go copy. Let's go into options, element attributes. We'll go to profile manager. It's gonna be really good at this by the end of this. Uh, let's go chimney two, return and chimney. Go okay and paste. So in kind of view, uh, we're going to do the same thing and go save. We'll go back to our thumb and uh, let's go to our plan view again. Now it's this chimney here. Uh, we've already got it set to the custom profile. Let's set it to chimney two and let's bring it around. Yes, yeah. They might actually be, be a bit too big, I'm just thinking, but we can come, we can come back around to it. Oh, what's going on there? No, the, the back one is square, so I'm gonna have to reduce that. Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be more like this. Let's go fucking. Yeah, because I'm tracing it around the base. And that's, yeah, I think the other ones I did too big. I'll go back and fix them up in a second. Um, what I'll do, I'll do a rectangle for this one here. Let's go 600 by 600. And I'll use the magic wand. Let's see how that looks. Did you do it the right way? No, I did it the wrong way. So we'll do, we'll just select these two that I did before. We'll go into 3D, see if we can do this in 3D. We'll select all of these and then we'll just flip it. Hey, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Oh man, all right. But that's probably flipped it, so it's out like that too. So it's never that simple. Uh, so let's bring that one in, so it's on the inside line of the one that we just dropped. There we go. Select all these, and we'll go. No, it's not working. Profiles are too close together. I think. Uh, that's a pity. Spring uh, it in, say two fifty each. Fifty. Yeah, I think that's two fifty. Because that's going to be half half the size, and I'll give this 50 mil tolerance. Let's have a look. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, let's undo that. Let's bring in say 120. 20. 20. This works. 20. It's intersect. Yeah. There we go. Nice. All right. We got that chimney done. Let's go back through. We'll fix up the other chimneys in a sec. Let's see what the height of this chimney here is from the ridge. Go back. Yep, much lower than the other one. So from the ridge of this roof here, height-wise, we're looking at 11, so 1.1 meters. 
So let's go back into 3D. We'll grab this one. So 1.1. So we'll go to the ridge and we'll bring it up. 1100. Oh yeah, we got three chimneys. Now to get these so these are the right width, let's have a look back at our drawings again. Uh, width wise, 700 that way. It's going to be double. 12. 712. So 12 that way. Um, what we can do, so we can do this relatively accurately, we can take one of these section markers, uh, I mean elevation markers, and we'll bring this one over here. We'll go into the view and we'll have a look see what it's ended up being. Uh, 15, so not too far out. Uh, so 15, if it's if we bring it in basically 150 each way, that'll bring us down to 1200. Uh, 11, so 400, so yeah, 200, 200 each both ways. So I'll go 200, go on through here. 200, intersect those, yeah. 200, 200. There we are. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah. That's cool. Now let's check it on the other on the other elevation. Um, I'll just bring in one of the other, other elevation markers so I don't have to just keep panning them around. Let's bring that one out. The cool thing is when you're doing stuff in 3D, you can automatically just cut elevations like this and you've just got a flat 2D drawing. Let's go, that's about one meter. So that's too wide. 300, so if it's 300 too big, we need to bring it in by 150 each side. So let's go 150 each side, 150, 150. So yeah, it roughly lines up with what I was originally doing where I was lining up with the chimney. Uh, anyway. Anyway, we learned some stuff along the way, didn't we? Let's go 150. Let's take both these chimneys. Chimney five, intersect. I've got all these, uh, all, as many of the shortcuts set up as I can for typical tools that I've got set up. So for this intersect tool here, I've got it set to the keep, uh, keypad short uh, to the number five. So I can just tap five instead of always popping back up to the top. The more shortcuts you got, uh, it's just gonna make your life so much more streamlined, quicker, and efficient no, I can say I'd highly recommend cool so we've got our chimneys done yeah it's starting to come up real cool uh this bit of face is a little bit too far too far so let's bring it back sometimes it just needs a little bit so let's go uh 7099 yep there we go I don't like odd numbers in any of my stuff uh, where I can uh but for tiny elements like that, where one mil shaved off, it's it's not gonna make a big difference. Um, while we're in here, I didn't put the gutters on uh, these faces here. So I'll do that while I'm at it. Let's go back into 2D. We'll go back up to our roof. Hey, there we go. And we'll go save. Uh, we'll grab our gutters and we'll go down to, yeah, there we go. Nice. And we'll delete this rear one because that one's not relevant. Just double check, yeah. Grab this as they're grouped, bring it down. We've got a 25 good ones. Now, for some reason, uh, it's because because of this here. It's, is it because of that? Or is it because it's intersecting with something else? Let's go 2199. Here we are. Oh, wow. Neighbors. What's going on? Let's go number five. No, it's not working. So let's go 4624. I think it is because of them. Let's check it out. No, it's not. Uh, small details are getting caught in the caught in the minutia. So let's just get it, uh, get out of this part as soon as we can. Seven zero nine nine. There we go. And this part as well. Four six two three. Oh, that's killing me. I'm, I'm gonna figure that out later. We'll come back to it. Um, let's do the other two gutters. This one here. We'll do it manually down to. Oh, that is not. That. Always have to sometimes zoom in. <laughs> Always sometimes. Um, usually you need to zoom in uh, pretty close to make sure you're actually clicking the right node. Otherwise, at some point, you're going to be chasing around one millimeter around a plan. And once you've done it once, once you've done it like three times, yeah, you don't ever want to do it again. It's so painful. You can spend literally hours just chasing after a millimeter. That just it could have been avoided if we zoomed in close enough. Go down 25. The material is not even set to like the proper materials yet, but uh, I love I love seeing a, a form come together. All right, let's go save. All right, before we were just tidying up a couple of the gutters. We've just done our chimneys. I see one more gutter. I just need tidying up just here. Let's go back in 2D. And we'll bring this one out and along. We've got this at the same height, so that should work for us. Do that. Let's have a look-see. Yes, and we'll delete this gutter here and shorten this one 
I just think these, there we go, cool. Uh, now with the chimneys, let's uh, turn on grouping. We'll select all of them. We're going to pan down and go connection, solid element operation. These are going to be our operators. And this time let's select all of our roofs and we'll turn these to the targets and we'll go subtraction with upward extrusion and execute. Let's see what it's done. Yeah, that's how the lines are much more tidy now. If we go undo, it's got that blur around the edges. If we go redo, yeah, it's got that solid line. Very nice. Ah, all right. So let's go back to our checklist. We've got chimneys with the complex profile or morph tool uh, doing the two then intersecting them. Check that one off, confetti. All right, stairs. Uh, we're going to stair detail with morph tool. Um, the stairs are interesting on this one as well. Let's go down. So they look like standard stairs here. They look like standard stairs there, but when we come to the front here, we'll see how it kind of slopes on down and it's gonna look very cool in the 3D, I think. And we can see how the different thicknesses just on this portion here. So that's gonna be next up when we start into the next section. So we're going to kick off next on the stairs. So let's minimize and get back into our drawing. All right, so our stairs. That's very interesting. We've got four, we've got four, and then we've got five, but our ground looks relatively even the whole way across. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna stick with four for the time being. I think that'd be somewhat of like a landing down the bottom of this one just here, by the looks of things here as well. Four rises. Five rising, just four goings and two. That's four treads. Two, three, four. Two, three, four, five. Four. Yeah, it's it's right on the ground there. All right, cool. Let's just roll with four. We'll uh, not worry about this bottom tread just here. Um, let's jump in. We'll grab our slab using the eyedropper tool. And we'll zoom in and we'll create our first step. We'll do this one with slabs. There is a dedicated stair tool, but for the sake of this, we'll be able to quickly model up our stairs using this. Let's go. 340, yeah, sure. That looks good. And we'll just duplicate this and then duplicate it one more time. Now for each of these, let's set it to, so if it's 800, uh, 800 divided by five rises is gonna give us yet 160. So each of these, we're going to set to 160 for the height and we'll go zero for that one. And we'll go into 3D. It's just gonna be quickest to do it here. So we'll zoom on in. We'll select all four and we'll bring it down so it's the height of the deck. Bring it down, say 160 for the first one, deselect it. 160 for the second, deselect. 60 for the third, deselect. And for the last one, 160. There we go. Let's go ahead and see if we can bring both down at the same time. No, let's go and do that second one a bit further. So let's just bring that one up and that one down. Cool. Now, what material is that? Let's have a little look, see in the elevation. To me, that looks like concrete. So let's just do that as a concrete. C O N C concrete. Mm, let's go texture to it. Let's just do it to gray then. G R paint and we'll go down to light gray. There we go. That'll suit us. Yeah. All right, cool. Now let's go back to our elevation. We'll duplicate these stairs, save us having to model up the other stairs as well. And we'll take this side and we'll crop this one in 160. Grab the three other stairs. We'll use the trim tool and we'll snip that off just there. Let's pick those up again, drag it over to our veranda and rotate that one around. The goings aren't quite as big for this one. So I'll just bring this back to say 300. I'll crop these back 40, 40 mil each, but just reuse them so I don't have to set up the height again. All right, so we want to create this hold on let's just pop back into the floor plan next up we want to create this just here this little detail i'm quite fond of this uh, little portion here so what we can do is we can actually draw it in we can trace this element just here this one just here we'll use the polyline we'll zoom on in and let's trace down along let's go 305 let's go 80 to the back up and we'll meet up this one just here there we go so that's created our first shape let's create a second one just here and a third and final one just here and that last one uh let's just join up this bottom one to this top one 
And from here, we'll essentially just use the magic wand. We'll just use the magic wand with the, uh, what's the tool called again? The morph tool, of course, the morph tool. All right, we'll hold it in spacebar, press that one in. We'll do the same thing for these three other areas here. Grab these. Ah, uh, now this is in full plan. So uh, this isn't going to do much for me here. Um, I could go into the 3D, double click and find it here. Then I could rotate it. If that's not going to cause too much headache, I think it's going to be more pain than it's, let's see. Ah, uh, no, that's all right. All right, cool. Let's roll with that. So now if I go back into 2D and I select it, there we go. Yes. I'll drag these on over to my stair. Let's rotate them around. Um, we can get rid of these lines now that we've used as our reference to create it. Um, let's have a look, see how thick this is going to be. We're looking at about 400. Perfect. Let's zoom in, grab these just here. I feel like we might be missing one. So there are three there. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Missing the bottom one. What happened with the bottom one? What we can do is we can duplicate this one here. Uh, bring it down a bit, say, I reckon 200. Or bring it out, say, another 50 mil. Now nah, it's going to get to be a bit of pain to pull it out, is it? I think we're going to be right. Yes. Okay. Just to there. All right. Not a big fan of the uh, texture that we got on there at the moment. Actually, let's bring that in, say, 25 mil. That's half that distance we just created. There. Let's go 25. And let's select all of these ones we've just created. We'll turn them into a group. And we'll turn on surfaces. Yeah, all right, cool. You know what, I'm gonna leave it as sand beige for the time being. And the width of this was gonna be 400 for that top one. So let's grab it and we'll go to the pet palette and just drag it out 400. Click again, there's that one done. Now let's check the width of this bottom one. We can do this on the elevation view that we've got. If we go up, so this one here was 400. This one here is 250, 270, 300. 250, 270, 300, 250. Let's go this one on one pit pallet, 270 and 300 for our final one, just here, 300. All right, let's pan around. So if that one is 250, we just go half the distance. So 15 mil to center that one, recenter that one to that one there. And let's go 10 mil for that one. Not a big fan of the line color there at the moment, but we'll get to that in just a sec. We'll tweak that one. Let's pull this over to that one there and we'll center it as well. Nice even number for me. What did we end up with? 150, easy. Cool. Nice, yeah. All right, let's come together. All right, let's change our pens to something a bit more visually appealing. Let's go to black, black pens. And we'll bring the top of this down to the top of the deck. Hmm. Interesting. We'll bring this part of it up to the top of the deck. Yeah, okay, that's better. I like that. Let's regroup it and bring it over so it hits to the stair. Mm, interesting. We've got a bit of void space in there at the moment. Let's see what the actual drawing has on it. There we go. Let's see what the drawing has. So it looks like it extends the stair all the way to that portion. So maybe they, they did those first, uh, then cast those in and use these as a, like a, a type of formwork. Um, let's have a check. Yep, we're still recording, good. Uh, so what we'll do, let's just grab these and just bring it in. So let's say 100, 100 mil. What's the distance between these two? 1700. Let's check out our floor plan. Now it's brought it over a bit too far. So we'll bring the actual stairs into um, this portion here. And it'll work better. We'll take it. We'll select all three at once, or four, and we'll bring it over, say, 150. 150, then we'll extend this out 300, which will give 150 the other way as well. 300, 300, and the final one just here, just to visually stretch that one out. Um, now I've got grouping turned on, so if I drag that, it should drag all three of them. So let's mirror it and see if we can just do this in floor plan, make things a lot simpler. It did drag all of them, but it didn't create a duplicate, so let's mirror it again but yeah make sure we've got that plus button and we'll go continue cool all right so we'll select our stairs we'll turn on grouping and from here we'll want to go to solid element operation we'll turn on the stairs of the target we'll take 
these just here and turn these as our operator. I just turned off grouping just before I'm about before I'm about to do this operation and we'll go subtraction. And that should clear up our lines. There we are. Let's zoom out. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to our checklist. Stairs, stair detail. Done. All right. Let's give ourselves a bit of confetti. There we go. Now, next up, posts. Um, posts are usually pretty easy, but for this one, we've got some quite interesting ornate posts. These ones just here. Um, lower portion should be pretty straightforward. This portion here, maybe a bit more fun. We'll go in and trace those in a minute. Um, in the interim, we've got these posts just at the back here. They look like they've got the edges uh, chamfered off just here. They've like they've tooled out the edges of it. Might be an interesting detail to do. We'll see if we can recreate it. Let's go to the post tool. Let's see what size our posts are. I'll just put one in there for the moment. I think it's gonna be 90, oh, okay. Uh, about 120. So let's take a post, we'll go 120. We'll do it square, bring that one back down and we'll offset this from building. So it's an even dimension, 2815, 2815. And we'll bring this one in, say 50 mil. And we'll do the same just over here and bring that in 50 mil as well. There we go. So we've got our posts, so let's pan around to the back. Uh, let's change the material to say something like a pine. No, that's terrible. Sandy beige. Yeah, not as bad, there we go. All right, we'll bring these down 100 so it matches up with the deck. Yep, let's just, let's do a solid element operation. We'll right click, connection, solid element operation. Have these as our targets. We'll set our two roof planes. We'll go operator, subtraction with upward extrusion, execute. There we go. Now, if we're going to chamfer the edge of it, that's gonna be interesting. What we could do is, we could do a circular post. I think that we could use to uh, use as a solid element operation. I'll just give a quick example. So let's jump back into our floor plan. We'll duplicate this one just here and we'll go to, uh, we'll go to circle. Yep, 120 should be fine. Now let's bring this one in to here. We'll bring it in line with that. And we'll go say 50 and 50 this way. It's a bit too much. Let's bring it back out, say 25. 25, we'll take this one. Let's bring it up by say 90 mil and bring that down. Then we'll set this as the operator. This is the target and we'll go just subtraction. We'll go execute and we're just going to hide this post. Let's go to hidden. There we go. All right, cool. So that's created that little chamfer in the post for us. Mm, I think it's going to draw too much attention. I think it's gonna subtract from it as a whole. So. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to scrap the idea for these posts, but I think we'll stick to creating the ornate posts out the front. So let's dedicate our time to that one. Um, all right, these posts out here, they're fine. Let's start with our posts out the front. These ones look like they're circular. So let's go to circle. They're a bit larger. Let's go to say 150, 150 mil. Yep, that looks about right. Let's drag that till we get to the slab. Where's our slab? Just there. Bring this one to our slab and we'll insert it, say 100, just so that we've got even offset for both of our sides to the slab. And we'll go 100. There we go. Duplicate this down. 3130. 3040. And this last one just here. Was it 150? We ended up doing this one over on this side. 100. So let's bring that one back down 50. 50. Duplicate it across to here. 3, 3, 3 0, 0. Bring this one across. Into there. Got two left to go. Let's bring this one in 100. And that leaves us just with this last one here which is another 3300. You can see where they've had posts just in there, but they've uh, rubbed them out or uh, other positions that were, they were considering. It's cool to find little details like that. Um, let's check out our 3D. All right, posts are in. Now let's go back into our 2D. They've got thick base. They've got thick bases. Let's check out in the 2D. I reckon those would be rectangular. Yep, rectangular base. Let's give that a go. Um, so let's pop back over. We'll pick up a 
post, one of the other ones we just created. And let's line that up so it's centered. Make this one larger, uh, but we'll make it shorter first. So let's make it say 300, 300 high. And we're going to make it say 200 wide square. And let's center this to this post here and just see what this one lo looks like. Yeah, I think that might work. And we'll create another one, just duplicate it and offset it say 50 mil. I'll make it a bit smaller. Let's make this one 175 and we'll center this post as well. There we go. We'll zoom in and we'll pull this one up. Let's say just 100 and let's check out what our actual plan shows us in 2D. See how close we got. So almost 200, almost got it on that one. But for this one here, it's much less. So it's about 50. So let's check it out. Oh, that's way too big. Um, so 100 and then say 50 for this one. We'll bring it down, then up 50. There we are, nice one. Let's pop back into 2D. We'll take these ones that we just created, we'll turn them into a group, and we're just going to apply those to all the remaining posts. We'll have all those bases done. This one here, and two left to go. And this one just shot. Yeah. Oh, we start getting some extra details in. All right, let's see what height these posts are actually meant to be, but the decorative ones. We'll pop back to our drawing just over here. So overall height. Overall height is going to be to where the fascia is, 2730. Um, two so I reckon 2750. Let's go 2750. Select all these posts. Let's turn these into groups so that we don't have to keep selecting them every time we go through. It's just going to speed things up a little bit for us. Group. And we're currently at 3 1, so 2750. There we are. So it shortens things up a little bit. Because we're going to have bull nose, it's going to make everything work. Um, so we're not interrupting with the head height just here. All right, next up, we want the detail, the ornate detail on this portion here. This part is going to be a little bit of fun because what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom profile for this and we'll see if we can make it work and then we'll twist it on a diagonal so we can try and create a more realistic uh, type of a scroll. Let's see how we go. So we'll go to our polyline and we'll start drawing. Oh, that's the spline tool. Hold on, there we go. Polyline, polyline, and we'll trace on down. And we're going to have to come back here in a second and chuck in some curves. This is actually where the spline tool could have came in handy, actually. I'm not going too crazy with the detail because I think we're going to lose a lot of it anyways in the 3D when we zoom out. Um, I think it's going to be more indicative. What I wouldn't mind doing would be uh, going online, seeing if I could actually find uh, scroll work that's been done like this for a 3D model. It's There's no worth in like redoing something if it's already been done. So, um, And if I could just import an ARCHICAD, that'd be incredible. Um, that way I can just get so much more detail on uh, more older ornate plans like this. It'd be very cool. Very cool. Mm, not quite the effect I th thought would have. So let's just create a little bit more of a scroll. Yep. All right. Now let's just start curving a little bit. That might create the effect more for us. Yeah. I think we're starting to get a, hmm. Be interesting to see how this one turns out. Not hundred percent on this so far hmm. to get that little detail on the inside there. I'm curious if we can create a profile with a negative on the inside of it. Can't say I've done one of those before. So we'll be doing something new. Let's give it a go. All right, let's, let's see what happens. We'll create that and we'll remove that from the center. We'll copy it, we'll go into our element attributes and we're going to create a custom profile. Create a new one, we'll call this scroll work. Go okay, okay, and let's paste this one in. Center of view, it's letting us do it so far, but let's put it in. And once we save it, let's see what it comes up with. It worked. All right, let's take it in and see what it looks like when we've actually done it in full plan. So we'll wrap around the post, which means we'll just need to grab a wall. We'll set it to custom profile. Yep. And we'll want to go to scroll work. From here, let's just draw it around and see what it comes out with in the 3D. It's disappeared. Where has it gone? Let's turn on grouping. Oh, it's <laughs> been sent way down. Um, so let's bring that up, say 2000 above ground level. All right, there we go. Hasn't really done anything for us. It looks like it's flipped it around the wrong way. So let's just group all them and then flip them back. Hey, there we go. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, gives us a little bit of detail. 
Let's just delete one of these edges off and see what it comes up with. Yeah, all right. That's worked out surprisingly. Surprisingly, all right. All right. Let's take it and group it and we'll rotate it by 45 degrees and see how that comes up. I'm not sure if it's quite the effect that we're going for, but it might be what we're going to have to go with for the time being. If we could inset them a little bit more so they're closer to the post, that'd be handy. They do have quite, uh, they have a bit of a platform so that the bracketing can kind of come from there. Let's try and bring it in just a little bit to see what it looks like. So let's say go 50, 50, 50, come back in, select all of these again, and we'll intersect. Uh, not quite, it kind of almost works. But I think that's what we're going to roll with. So let's grab that. Well, we can always come back and uh, detail that up further if we need to. So we'll bring that one in. And we'll duplicate that through to our other posts and just check it out, see what it looks like. Grab this group, look it up, and to this one just here. There we go. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, we're getting there. Now, what colors is this actually? So they're all actually more of a blue, more of a steel kind of blue. So let's just change the colors. I know I'm meant to be doing texturing later on, but um, it kind of helps me visualize things as I go along. So let's grab this one and duplicate it across from the center to the center. Uh, what color is this one currently set? Uh, metal steel. Let's set these to metal steel as well. What I might do, I might just group all these together just so that we don't have to select them again. Group and we'll turn these to steel. ST, metal steel. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so the posts have started. Next up, so we've got our scroll work, we've got brackets, and we've got the fretwork above brackets in the fretwork. All right, let's give the fretwork a bit of a go. So similar type principle, we'll take the polyline and we're going to trace around and we'll bring this one back on over. We're gonna curve it just in a sec. So don't worry about that straight line just there at the moment. And bring that back to there, there we go. And the pet palette, we'll just select the right one. Very cool trick with the pet palette. If you just tap F while you're in the pet palette, you can cycle through uh, the pet palette. I actually learned that from uh, <laughs> someone who was doing work experience with this. Um, they'd found it out and shared it with me. Um, shout out to Josh, if you're watching. So good on you, mate. I, I never forgot that. Good on you. Um, so yeah, you can learn from anyone. You really can. You can learn from anyone uh, if you've got an open mind to it. Um, Let's do a bit of that scroll work, similar to what we did just here before. Um, I think it'll add a bit of dimension. Let's see if any of the others have better detail for us to trace off of. I think, yeah, it's a bit of a much of a muchness. Um, yeah, all right, let's just go with this one here and this one just here. On that up, this one, curve it slightly and up to there. And let's curve this around. Here is surprised how the other one it actually turned out pretty right. The pet palette's getting a bit clingy. Let's get that out of there. <laughs> it's funny how it just gets closer and closer. Um, all right, let's start curving this a little bit. Now, this might actually be a bit of a better job for a spline, honestly. Uh, what I might do, I don't think we're going to see the resolution of it, uh, so I'm not going to bother with it. Um, sometimes it's just about focusing on what details are most critical. Um, and I think we can come back to it um, before it comes to worse. Let's mirror this one around and let's reduce the scale, control K. And let's mirror this section from the lower part. Let's go at a 45 degree. And that's gonna save us having to redraw that and then back up to there. All right, kind of some semblance. All right, let's bring that across. It's a little bit thick, so let's bring that in a bit. And let's trace around that one there and close up the gap. And we'll go to this one here, so we extend the line. And this one just here. Mm, it's a bit of a mess, but I think it'll look all right. But when we actually start adding in the brackets, let's see if we can copy and turn this into a custom profile, profile manager, and we'll go bracket and we'll go okay paste this one in original location bring this one up and we'll go save let's go back into our plan and we'll go into where we're going to install our first bracket let's go to our wall 
and we'll change it from scroll work to bracket and we'll make this one say 50 mil wide and we'll center it to our column which is just here and we'll bring it out to the let's go into our 3d see how it looks again it's went really far low i'm guessing let's check it out yep massively let's go 2000 2400 yeah all right all right i don't mind it i think by the time we add in the rest of the detailing it will give us the impression of the bracketing let's get rid of a couple of these um so we've got that bracket let's check what the height is and where it kind of sits in comparison to everything else on the original detail oh my computer's struggling a little bit the size of the jpeg here so it sits on top um, and we've got area above so if this post is 2.5 meters high then this needs to be 300 mil lower than that height and the rest of that needs to come down as well so let's select all of our detailing and bring it down to the top of the post height and then 300 lower 300 now because we've done one we can just start mirroring these and it makes it so much quicker so we'll grab this first one and we'll mirror this one across and grab both of these we'll turn them into a group and we'll mirror this across to the other post grab the center and center that one in there we'll ungroup it and just grab one of these and we'll mirror it just across and bring it across to this one here and we'll mirror it across and do the same thing here we'll group these together and then we can drag these across to this next one and the next one just across see how this looks yep that's coming along uh, didn't duplicate it on this one so let's bring that back across to there and for this one i'll drag it up to here then mirror it across I'll grab both of these and bring it across to this post just here. Oh, we've got one more, one more. After this, we're pretty much up to the scroll work. There we go. All right, cool. So after that, oh, we've got one more corner bracket to do up just there. Let's mirror this one across and bring this, bring this one down. There we go. All right, let's get on with our fretwork. So if we do one of these, we should be able to duplicate it across so that we can essentially do this entire portion here all in one go. Um, what I'm thinking is if I create one massive pattern that I can then say crop, I think that's gonna be the easiest approach to it. So we'll take one of these patterns, we'll trace over the top of it and then try and make it a seamless cut. Let's try and use the spline tool for this one just so we get some uh, nice arcs going, yeah. Um, spline tool. I didn't come across the spline tool until I was working in Brisbane. Um, thank you, Dave, for showing me this one. Um, yeah, for, for the longest time, I've just been using the polyline tool and just um, modifying um, modifying it so that uh, it just had the curve that I wanted. But using the spline tool, it's so much easier. So thank you, Dave, at Open Design Solutions. Um, that was a fantastic one. I wish I had learned a lot earlier in the piece. Um, bring this one up to shot and bring that one back down. All right, close it off there. Um, now I'll start a new one just here. And bring it up and around till we come back around to here. Create this little blob. Now, if you uh, want to undo, you can just go backspace. I think I might have mentioned that earlier, but um, oh gosh, I wish I had found that out earlier. Would have saved me so much time after putting down so many polys and just being like, oh, I have to redo everything. Nope, you didn't Didn't have to redo everything. You could have just hit backspace and you would have been sweet. But now oh, we got there in the end. I'm down through to here, a bit of a sharper curve there. And we'll this one back on and over. We'll duplicate this in a second. Almost re reminds me of uh, some of the Maori patterns you find. Um, with the Maori, I've heard that it's more so uh, the negative space that you need to focus on than the actual uh, where the lines are themselves. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm kind of reaching them out of my zona um, competence and expertise. So, um, all right. So from here, if I grab that and duplicate it across, that's, that will be the goal. So let's see if we can get it so it's exact. Let's say, call it 275. Yep. To the center. We'll create another poly just so it hits that one there. And that one was 21, 21, and backs up onto there. 
So we needed to create this one so it matches in with that. Oh man, this is this is getting complicated. Approach this. Maybe if we go back one. Mm, let's delete that. Let's create a square. I reckon if we can segment it off. So 300 by say 225. If we can get that segment perfect, the segment just here, let's drag this out so we're just not distracted by everything else going on there. Create a duplicate. All right, cool. I'll get rid of that, get rid of all that. Just need to focus what's going on in this box just here. I'll bring this down another, say, five mil. And I need that to connect these points here to connect up with these points here. So if I grab these, duplicate that across till we line up like there. And we want to bring from this node here down. So it matches up with this one. Yeah, like that. All right, cool. Bring that up there like that. Add a node and each one of these little mods I, I'm making here at the moment, I'll need to essentially replicate to this side here. So if I take this and duplicate it back across to here, then I crop off this portion here, then delete the original, then that should create a seamless line. How's that one meeting up with that one there? Redo that, redo. It's just a little bit short just on this bottom portion here. So if I bring that to there, yeah, all right, cool. That means that if I crop this one off, then fingers crossed, if everything goes smoothly, if I drag this across here, so this bottom one meets. Yeah, cool. Oh man. Nice. All right, that worked out. So I'll group all of these. Now it's the negative pattern that we want. So what I'll need to do with all of these grouped, so group all that. And what's our spacing? 300. So I'll duplicate this, say spread 300 using the multiply tool. And I'll zoom out here in a second. And I'll just array this across like this. And let's create a bunch. How far do we need to go out? About that far. Now, do they alternate in the actual pattern themselves? Nope, they're all just the one direction. All right. Now, let's uh, bring this one up. We'll just create a duplicate 500 just in case we need to come back to it and we'll create this one across all the way to the end of the pattern just there uh, let's bring it down say 20 up say 10 and we're going to create a fill now let's see if we can grab the fill and subtract uh, it's going to be a long shot let's see if we can subtract the pattern from the fill <laughs> oh, my computer's bogging just at the thought i should have saved before this no, nah, all right, I'll save before I do it. If I try and do it, I'll crash everything. Okay, so it's going to segment it out. How much can I do at once? Ooh, let's see if it loads, if I can do that whole chunk. Let's do that. Let's see what that came up with. Oh, no, I don't think it's done anything. Has it? No, nah, it's done nothing. How are we going to approach this? Oh, okay, duh, of course. We'll just break it down to the single, single segment, then we'll dupl duplicate that across. That's fine. So we'll just undo what we've done and we'll just bring this back so it's a single. And yeah, that's just gonna simplify things. So we'll just go the one fill pattern. We'll just go the one fill, I should say. And then we'll just uh, create negative space within here. Yep, all right, cool, that's our guy. Um, now, since we've got that fill, what we can do, if those match up, those fills match up, which they almost do, I'll just adjust it and then bring it back. Yep, all right, that's, that's all good. I'll bring this one up here. All right, so we've got the fill. What we can do, we can create this. All right, let's just make sure I'm still recording so I'm not talking to myself. Yes, we're still recording. We're just about to do our big move with the fill. We can either create one and duplicate it across or what we could do, what we could try to do is, since we know this is gonna be 300, we can duplicate the fill from this point here. Oh, let's not zoom out that far. Uh, we can duplicate it across a ton of them so it lines up roughly with there. And then we'll select the original and we'll go edit, reshape. I'll have a drink of water and say it correctly. <clears throat> Fill consolidation. Let's see if this works. Merge, ident merge identical adjoining fills and we'll go okay. Oh, I think it's worked. Hey, interesting. God, that's a lot of polys, but anyway, let's give it a go. Go copy, let's undo. Uh, yep, just so we've got our original back. I'll delete those, then I'll paste. There we go. So I've got my fill. I think it's going to slow our project down if we do it like that. Mm. Uh, 
You know what? Let's create a custom, custom profile of it anyways, just to see what happens. If it does bog down the project too much, we'll think of another way of approaching it. Oh god, it's not doing anything there at the moment, is it? Come on. If I just go escape. I did save that one. And Archicad's actually pretty good for auto-saves. Oh, come on. Hmm. I think we're being a little bit ambitious with what we can get away with. Uh, it is a lot of polys, a lot of different things going on there at the moment. What we could, whoops, what we could essentially do, if we could get it into the 3D, which would be very handy, we could essentially turn it into an object. So that way there's less polys as to draw from. It's just drawing from a reference, which I think we might do. We might just um, do one, then create that into an object, then dupl duplicate that object. I think that might be the best way to approach it. Oh, come on. All right. Might have to close down ArchiCAD. Let's pause the recording here for a second. There we go. Right after I finished, uh, once I hit the button, it was okay. Um, okay. All right, we're back. So um, what we're going to do, we're just going to undo all of that. We're just going to grab this single one. We're going to go copy, and we're going to turn it into a custom profile. Uh, the fill type, we're just going to turn to, uh, say, 50%. We'll go copy, and we'll go into our profile manager. We're going to create a new one, and we're going to go... Uh, scroll work we'll go okay and we're going to paste this one in into center of view and we'll, yeah all right, we'll line it up roughly like that that's the way we're going to approach it and we'll do it as beam as well and we'll go ooh, object library part okay maybe we do that it as that as well let's go save exit out and see if we can start chucking it in just above our posts and our deck let's zoom in We'll go to our wall tool and we're going to go to scroll top and yeah, this is what we want to do just here. And we'll create it so it's about 20 mil thick, just like that. Bring it up to the post and we'll center it. So we'll go 15, Let's see how it looks. Ah, <laughs> I fall for it every time. All right, let's go to 400 and we'll go okay. Yeah, all right, there we go. All right, so that's our bracket. now. Let's see if we can duplicate this 300 and not actually I'll save and just hopefully not destroy my computer. Um, oh, now these brackets aren't quite meeting up with the post. I should have done that earlier. Should have noticed that earlier. All right, we'll come back to the brackets in a second. For now, let's find our column and we'll bring that to the front and I'll just make that so that it's a white fill cut fill will be white and hopefully we can see that a little bit better yes we can see that much better so we'll start lining up the other attributes with that why is that went off center it might it be something to do with yes all right so it's the axis so if we go center uh bit of a pain if we bring that in there like that then we see if we can do it like that no oh <laughs> no all my posts Ah. Uh, don't tell me I'm gonna to have to do it for, nah, all right. I just won't uh, inject the parameters. I'll just select them. So let's just go into 3D. That's gonna be the quickest way to do it. All right, I'll just select the posts, these ones here. And now we'll just go in and we'll change the cut fill to white and we'll use the cover fill to white as well. Ah, and we'll also wanna go back and we'll undo. So it selects them all again, we'll redo and we'll turn them to a group just so we're not selecting the bottom of the posts again. Let's select the center of the post, turn on grouping, and bring it to the front. There we go. Much, much quicker, much quicker, much easier. Um, how much of the brackets going to need to be brought in? 30 mil, 30 mil for each of them. Okay. I'll save my efforts and just. Uh, uh, it's going to be quicker just to uh, manual work. All right, let's just do it. Let's just do it, but do it quickly. Has this one been done? No, that one hasn't. So let's duplicate our efforts. And we'll go 30 with those two. 30, we'll bring this one in. This one looks, yep, that one's all good. Can't help myself. I can't help myself, but tweak the brackets so that they look proper. I'll bring this one in, 30. And the next one we should be able to do in four moves. I reckon. So if we go one, two, three, four, go 30. We'll do the same for this just over here. One, two, three, 
for we'll bring that in 30 and same thing for this one 30 cool all right i should have done that for that side there but we got there we got there let's double check make sure we're still recording yep we're all good now our scroll work let's pick it up and bring it in and let's start duplicating it let's save and multiply 300 for our spread we'll bring it out this way yes like this now i just want to lock it to our original ah come on elevation zero yep that's what we want cool nice one now it's not bogging my computer down too much so i think let's just roll with it so i'll, I'll undo i'll redo then i'll group those together then after that i'll just run a beam in uh below and one up top and i'm going to mirror this one across so let's go back into our 2d view we'll select it and we'll mirror it across uh, so that should have that one covered there too Oop, not quite enough so let's just do it in the 2d it might actually be simpler honestly so i'll just select a couple here let's extend it out there we go creating some duplicates there we are let's just delete these and two here now let's have a look at our drawing and see what they've got detailed on theirs so it goes all the way across all the way across on the front and wraps around on the side as well so let's do it on the side it's going to be easier in our 2d ah oh, selecting them is a bit of a nightmare there we go it's not too bad let's pick those ones up just there and mirror those cool let's select one more one more and mirror that across oh yes there we go that looks good to me so far all right let's have a look yes and let's take that group that one and let's see if we can do something a little bit tricky if we go mirror that brings that one up to there cool i'll bring that one down to there and i'm pretty sure it was 15 mil was it yes 15 mil the memory on the guy look at that all right so we just need to bottom and the top for the brackets uh we'll do that with either a slab or a wall i reckon a slab let's go slab pick up the slab make it the same width as the bracket and we'll just bring it all the way down and across to this final end one just here and we'll bring this one up so it's say two four hundred go enter oh yeah it's way too big so let's turn this material to metal metal that we've got steel yep for all of them and let's make the actual height say 50 mil it's pretty much almost bang on um let's save and just so that we separate the two materials let's change that to say zinc yeah all right it creates separation because otherwise the materials are going to want to join together um yeah like that and we'll bring that one up yeah cool all right i'm digging that let's turn that into group now with those grouped let's mirror this across well now let's select the bracket let's select this lab mirror this one across and we'll slice it off here in a second so we've mirrored it and we'll slice that edge off there go into 3d make sure it's selected no it's only selected one of them so we need to select the bottom one too let's see if we can do this in 3d without too much trouble no nope. yes cool let's go into 2d select it and crop that one off too delete it yeah that's coming up let's save it made some progress uh let's go back and see if we can select both the slabs this time so slab and hitting control tab we'll be able to select it like that and let's mirror it across make sure yep it's inset into the post yep that's good and we'll just want to extend both of these just to where the bracket is which is going to be just here and this one as well let's select the other slab it tells us whether an element is selected or not so we'll select that yep uh, within the palette when we've got stuff selected so let's do that uh while we're cycling through so i'm not explaining that very well i'm just kind of caught up in the in the drawing at the moment so when we're cycling through if we go um shift tab and if we select something it'll mention that it's selected as we cycle through so let's see if i can yeah there we go see where it says uh, roof selected and if i cycle through to the next one wall it doesn't say selected so handy little trick that one too just to keep in the back pocket cool so we've got our detailing done for that so we're pretty much up to the bullnose now um this is really the um the feature the feature point this front part so um, i think it's been worth putting a little bit of time into i should be able to reuse these as well for some other projects which will be cool especially if this is um yeah popular 
or people dig it, then I'll definitely be doing more of them. But uh, we'll see. Okay, so Bullnose is up next. Let's go into our 2D. Again, it's time to do a custom profile. So we'll select our polyline. Oh, actually, we'll use a spline. We'll see if we can use a spline for this. Spline should make it nice and curved. There we go. We'll just straighten this final one out. All right, that's one too curved there at the moment. So what we can do, we can just take the spline and bring it back to this node here and then finish it off with a polyline, which will be a straight one. We'll just go a single line, bring it to there. Quite sold on that curve. What's going on? That's interesting. See how it kind of cuts in there in the drawing there at the moment? I'm not sure what's going on there. But just so we can make it work, let's bring it up to there. Yep, I think that suits. I think it's where the uh, the capping is going over top. There's some kind of weird thing going on there. Uh, all right, let's bring this down to there. Let's see if we can, no. All right, so what I'll do, yes. All right, just using, uh, holding in spacebar, I've just created a single polyline for this one just here. So I'm gonna inset all the edges, say uh, 50 mil. And this way we can kind of create um, a bit of a frame for it. So bring this one down to here. So we just pick up this point here, which is essentially going to be like a rafter, like a curved rafter, um, which is what we're looking for, uh, for creating this bullnose roof. So I'll create, hmm, now the fill's not wanting to actually work within there. So let's bring this down just so we haven't got as much information that we have to deal with. Um, let's take a fill and try and fill in this gap. Yes, there we go, got him. Now let's change it to say 50% fill. Completely sold on that curve, gonna look a little bit odd. Yeah, I'd prefer it to come down a bit. So 25 mil. If we just bring that down 25 and this one down 25, then that, yes, All right, I'm happy with that. Let's go copy, let's go options, element attributes, and we'll go in through to profile manager. Let's double check and make sure our recording's all good. Recording. Yes. Uh, let's create a new one and we're going to call this uh, bull nose roof. We'll go okay. And we're going to paste it in there into center of current view, into center of current view. And we'll drag this one. So the origin point is just there. Cool. Uh, let's set this one to beam and we'll go save. Even though we've been pretty much using wall for everything at the moment just kind of handy to have up the sleeve just so i don't have to come back in and edit it later if i do need it so go back into our floor plan and we'll jump back on over to what we've done up already we'll go to the wall tool and we'll change it to pull nose roof now let's see which direction yes it's going to work this way we'll line up with that one there and we'll bring it across and down so it's in line with that one there. Gosh, if this works on the first go, I'll be so stoked. All right, let's see what we've created. <laughs> every time, every time it gets me. All right, uh, two, 700, I reckon for this one, two, 700. Oh, yes. Oh, killer. Oh, it looks good. That's cool. We do have a little bit of line going across the top there. I'm not sure about that, where it kind of pitches from that part there, but Let's bring it down just so it matches up with there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm, that's pretty cool. I'd love it if we didn't have that line across there though. That'd be nice. Is there any way we can remedy that? Say so I deselect that at the moment. Let's delete it. Yeah, it's just got a solid line going across the top there. Let's go undo. And let's see if we can edit the profile that we created. Let's see if slightly curve it. Uh, no, it's not quite the profile that we were hoping for, but Let's see if we can save and see if it gives us no line. Yes, 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 yes. All right, that's cool. That's better. That's what I'm after. All right, that works. It's all the way around too. That's cool. Um, let's see if we can put a custom orb profile on this. We'll just go custom, see if custom, color one custom orb. Yeah, oh man, that looks so cool. Look at that, wow. How much height do we have between here and here? 370, almost 380. We might need to change profile and bring it up just a little bit. Uh, let's have a look, see what it's telling us in here. Three, oh, no, it's almost 370, Three, 380 in there. Yeah, almost 370. Um, but how do we approach, here's the question, how do we approach getting this pattern going across? Because as stoked as I am with how Bullnose came out, 
I really dig the pattern that we've got going on there. Can we can we pick up the the roof just as a single plane? Create just one, and then what I'm thinking what I'm thinking is if we just bring it in, just create a segment like this. It's not letting us edit it. What's going on there? There we go. All right, just segments like this. Uh, what is our measurement that we've got there at the moment? 400. Let's take this to say 600. So if we've got a 600 segment, um, let's go to our materials and just see if we can change this up. Go to surface. Let's go new. Uh, let's go uh, alt color. And we'll just go duplicate and we'll see. We'll go into browse and we'll see if we can find something similar to what we're looking for, like a bit of an orangey type color. I think it might be a bit of a stretch, honestly. Um, so we might need to take it into Photoshop when we go to do our textures, but let's just do a test first, just to see if we can find an alternate sheeting. Let's go with, it's kind of orange, but it's brass. I think we might need to go into Photoshop. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll do that a bit later. Let's just do a tester. Let's go for this one just here. Go okay. We'll change this one to alt color. Yep, so we create distinction between the two. So we can do that a little bit later. The curve part is actually what I was trying to consider how we're going to approach that. So if we do this and then mirror it across and take these two roofs, oh, not gonna work. I was hoping for it to. Oh, unless, I'll tell you what, if we select the roof, then make it the target and then make this the operator in subtraction with upward extrusion. Hey, there we go. Yes, we can make it work. We can make it work. Cool. Yeah, that's going to be sick. We'll do a similar thing here. Target, operator, execution with upward extract, upward extrusion. Hmm. That one's not playing ball as much. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, it's intersecting with the other one. Oh, what a pity. I thought we had a solution for it. Uh, do I bring that up, say, 5 mil? Okay, we'll come back to it. We'll take the win, but we'll take the wins that we've got so far. All right. We'll delete uh, those other two for the time being. We'll just leave that one on there for, for the moment so we can come back, drag and duplicate it later. Um, yeah, and we'll use that for the pattern. So let's check what we've got left on our checklist. So we've got a post. We've been smashing through this. We haven't been going back to our checklist. So we'll go posts, confetti. We'll go lace work, uh, top and bottom members. They're attached to brackets, column head detail, and the base. We've got all those smashed out. Let's go tick and confetti. Details like the window sills. Um, okay. Yep. Let's do that. So uh, we've got the windows here at the moment. Let's see if we can use a built-in window sill. Uh, this would save us just going around with all the slabs. Let's go to got reveal, closure, wall inset, casing, sill. And we'll add in a sill, sill type, timber. Yes, we want that. Let's just go okay, see what it comes up with. Yeah, that's not bad. But what I've seen on the actual plans, they're massive. They've got a massive sill. So let's go say like 50 mil. Uh, what's the size? It's spread up. No, don't worry about that. Still oversized, yes. We want oversized still. We want a big still. Hmm. I want it nice and thick. I want it wider, but I want like a wide still. How can we make this still wider? What's the board? Oh, it's the board for the back. Oh, the board's for the internal. Okay. Um, let's not worry about that. Ah, okay. Okay. Sill. Here we are. So we're back to sill. And this is how much either side it is. Okay. Yep. We can do it in here. Brilliant. So we'll go, say, 50 mil either side, I reckon. 50 mil, 50 mil. And let's make this say 100. So that's 100 deep. Let's go back to say 20. No, let's go 50, 50. And then we'll make it longer. So let's go 100, we'll go okay. Yes, all right, cool. So now if we can apply that to, <clears throat> if we can apply that to all the relevant uh, windows, we'll be sorted. So I'll just inject it into these ones. Quick solution for these, which means we get nice, bunch of wins just off the bat then it's just pretty much this one over here i just need to redo that for all the other ones are sweet yep cool so what are the measurements that we ended up going with let me double check 50 for everything 100 for the depth all right that makes sense 
Oh, let's go back to 3D. Back in and to the sill. Let's go sill, sill oversize, and we'll go 50, 50, 100, 50. Go okay. All right, let's pause the recording because we've been going for a little while now. Half hour and start recording. All right. So let's check out our sill. Yep, that's looking good. Let's go back to our 2D and have a look, see if that's relatively accurate. Oh no, it's way thicker down. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's make that much bigger. Let's make it much bigger. Um, let's just select all the windows this time. Uh, we'll just do it the smart way. We can go. Uh, we've got the front highlight window selected too. Let's deselect those. I don't think they include a sill. Oh, we need sills for the doors as well. Let's check that front one. Yeah, the front ones have it too. Okay, let's do that as well. So all the windows will go in and we'll check our sills. 50, okay. Yes, okay, we've got this one selected. Let's go to sill, sill, oversized, 50, 50, uh, 50, we'll call this one 100. Call both 100, and that's thickened them all up. Yes, it has. Uh, let's do the same with our doors. Let's give those sills as well. Let's go into our doors. Do we have a back door as well? Yep, we do. Which is currently protruding up, so we'll change the height of that in a minute. We'll go in with all those selected. They also have a sill, fantastic. Sill, uh, oversize, 50, 50, 100, ooh, not 1,000, and 100, we'll go okay. Oh, it's, what's happened there? Undo, redo. Brought the door up. Let's go up 100 mil, see what happened. Undo, bizarre. All right, let's, let's undo. Uh, or redo and go back in and see what parameter we've filled with that's made it go weird. Oh, it's probably this. Let's go zero. Yeah, okay, there we go. But for some reason, it's on the other side. Of casing, still, oh, bummer. Threshold, okay, so it's threshold, extended. All right, uh, of hang side. I want it, say, 50. No, actually, we want it, uh, say, seven. I'll make it 50, we'll go okay. Yeah, all right, cool. Go undo, redo. I wanna see if we can bring it out just a little bit further. Side overhang, yes, we wanna go 50. Yes, and that brings it out both sides there. Nice. Ah, uh, the thing that kills me is that we haven't got a solid line across there. All right, let's just go undo, redo. We'll go back into the door and see. No, all right, let's just live with it. We'll just live with it, we'll be fine. All right. So we've got sills for all of our windows and our doors. Now this one's playing a bit of havoc here, so I might just get rid of it. I think it's a bit distracting than it's additive on this one. So let's get rid of these. We'll go okay. Yep, all right, cool. Yes, sills are looking good. Let's go back to our list. Detail like window sills, tick. Uh, materials, so materials, I can start playing with this roof material here now. So. What I'll do, I'll go into surfaces and I'll go browse. So this is currently in my library. Uh, what I'll do, I'll just create a new texture for this. Alrighty, so I've just found a couple of textures through, I think it's SketchUp Texture Club. Pretty sure. Yep, SketchUp Texture Club. I found an orange one and a blue one. So we'll go OK. Um, the old color and we'll go OK. There we are. So let's pop back into, yep, we've got orange and we've got blue. So I reckon we can alternate between the two and we can come up with something a little bit special. So let's go back in. We'll take this as our operator and we'll take the actual roof as the, actually, no, let's, we want this to be the target and this to be the operator and subtraction with downward extrusion execute. Oh no, we're doing that on the corner. Sorry, I've got the sequence out. So we'll go operator and we'll go this one as the target subtraction with downward extrusion. There we go. And that gives us a nice stripe. So let's do that at say 600. 600 centers, I reckon. Uh, what's the width of this? 600. So uh, 1200. Should be 1200 centers, I should say. 1200. Let's check out what it says on here. So it's about 500. So about a thousand. So let's make it accurate. Let's make it 500. So I think we've got 600 here at the moment. Let's grab our node and turn to 500. 
Now, I think the stripe finishes just here. Uh, no, about midway. So if we're going to go back into 3D, bring this one so it's about midway-ish there. We'll delete this one and we'll go 1000 centers for this. Go multiply, go 1000 and we'll bring it out this way. And zero elevation, yep. And we'll do the same thing for this one here. Let's go 1000, yep. And we'll go zero elevation. Uh, let's undo, undo, redo, redo. And then we'll group all of them together. And then let's mirror this one down this axis here. If we can get that to work, I'll be so stoked. That'll look so cool. Now let's put down one more, say 1000. And let's mirror that one. And go 1000 this way. Come on. Might have to do this in 2D. Uh, go back and we'll go ahead and grab this one. And we'll go 1000. There we go. All right, so now begins the little bit more complicated part, trying to actually crop these. So let's like both of them. So these are our target. This one is our oper operator with up subtraction with upward extrusion and execute. We've got that side. Fingers crossed that's worked well so far. Target. And we'll select the other one as the operator. Operator, subtraction with upward extrusion, execute. And I think it's, it's actually worked for us. Okay, interesting. We'll go, uh, those the target, we'll select the slab as the operator with subtraction of upward extrusion. And yep, that should trim it cleanly. Yeah. Um, let's select our primary roofs. I'm hoping that's, that works for this one here as well. Primary roofs here and here. Ah, uh, okay, it's offset it from the front there a little bit, has it? Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, the roofs must be a different, okay. Um, where have we gone lined up here? I think I've grown exactly along that line uh, on that one there. Or is I've grown offset there a bit? Must have done it perfectly mirrored there. Uh, has it done it for the other side as well? Oh, sorry, this is going to be a little bit disorientating here for a second. All right. Mm, all right, we're just going to have to redo it. Uh, sorry, guys. If you're going to do it, go do it properly. So let's just take all these. It's just done here. But it's going to be done really quick. So it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Delete and we'll, all right. So we've got those grouped. So since we've got those grouped, let's see if we can select them on the plan. No, it's not letting us select it there. Let's see if we can go down. Which story are they set on? Let's select it. And they're set to ground floor. And that's minus one. So we want to be on round floor, which is this one. Let's select wall, select all. We've done it as a wall, but it's not showing. Ah, uh, okay, here we are. Yes, this is them. Okay. All right. So we've got them selected now and they're grouped. So let's mirror them across. Yep, there we go. That should do it perfectly. We'll do one more here. Uh, that's got it grouped at the moment. So let's ungroup it. Let's go 1000. Let's select this one. We'll group these two together and then we'll just mirror it across this plane just here. Yep. All right. That's, that's done it perfectly there. Now we just want to select our walls again until we can find where is our roof so it looks like this there we go gotcha that one and that one and let's go to a corner and we'll mirror these ones across oh now i need to make sure that's recording yes we're recording thank god camera remote yes we're good let's go into our 3d yes all right let's do this properly this time and let's do this the quick way what do you reckon Let's go to find and select. We're going to select our element as the wall and we're going to uh, go material or surface, surface. That's what it ends up being, uh, outside surface. And we'll select this one and we'll go select and that's selected all those ones at once. We're going to lift these up, say, I reckon five mil. It's not noticeable, but it's going to separate the two roof planes so they're not overlapping. From here, we'll just want to select these two roof planes as well as these two roof planes. We're going to do as much of this in one go as we can. This one is the operator subtraction with upward extrusion. Execute. Yes. Select these two, these two, target. Select these as the operators. We'll go operator subtraction with upward extrusion. Execute. Excellent. Same thing for this one here. Target. Operator, subtraction with output extrusion, execute. 
Oh, and we've got one more. These ones here. Target operator subtraction with output extrusion execute. Let's select these planes just here, as well as these ones here. And we don't want those intersecting with the walls. So what we can do, we can just set those as a target. We'll select the slab because the slab is the same as the wall and it's going to cut it up anyway. So we'll go operator, subtraction with upward extrusion and execute. That cleans it all up nicely. Bugger, this little part here, it's not quite agreeing with us. All the other parts, perfect, look at that. That looks so sick. It's just that one part there, I don't know what's going on. Ah, oh, it's such a pity. Might be because of the width. Oh man, that'd be a pain to draw all that back in, but all right, I'll have to come back to that. For the time being, let's just see what the orange roof looks like with it, because that's going to be a bit of a feature for us. Let's select all these main roof planes, and we'll, uh, we need to group those, but we need to create a new surface. I'm going to go to our alt color and we'll go new and we'll go alt color to um, actually orange. We'll go okay, and we'll change this color just here so we can easily, easily identify it. We'll go okay, browse, and we'll select our orange. We'll go okay and okay. And then we just need to change it here. Ah, there we go. There we go. Hmm. That's pretty cool. I have to admit, I was expecting the orange to be a little bit brighter, but if I zoom in, maybe if I change the texture so it's a little bit larger, say 1500, no, let's change back 1000, okay, okay. Hmm, I might have to play around with that a little bit, but we're getting closer, we're getting closer. Gosh, I wonder how many times I've said that. You don't realize until you hear yourself back sometimes how many times you say a single phrase over and over again. We shall see. That's all coming together, but... Let's put it into a 3D projection settings. Uh, let's just save this as its own little 3D here. This is some reference plans from earlier. So we'll drag this one across so we can always come back to that view, which has now been set up in the view map just here. But that's our perspective, but we want an axometric. So we'll go from parallel projections and we'll go to uh, isometric and we'll go OK. Recenter. Hey, there we go. Let's save this one. Save the view, it's on layout. Cool. I'll delete it just there for the time being. We'll go back into it and let's rotate it around so it looks like from some of the other angles. See what it looks like from, say, here. We'll go, okay. Double click center. That looks kind of cool from there, too. Now, what I want to do, double click and I'll see what it looks like from this one here. And I'll cut through the plane because my idea is if we can create a cut through and then lift it up, I think that'll, that'll look pretty cool. Honestly, before we do that, but I have to admit, I'm not particularly sold on the orange. Let's just go back to the regular there for the time being. The blue is a bit powerful on there at the moment as well, too. Mm, something to do with the colors. It's just not quite doing it for me. Okay, anyway, let's go back to the ISO. We'll cut through, say from the top, just here, until we get through to about there, I reckon. And we'll go finalize, save this view, place it on layout. Go back into our 3D. We'll take our bottom plane. We'll bring it up so it's basically just underneath there. Go finalize and we'll grab our top plane and bring it up so it's above that point. There we go. And we'll save you on place on layout. Cool. Let's line these two up. We'll turn on transparent background. Turn off the drawing title. What's going on here? Okay, so we've got transparent background, but okay, we'll need to change the background. So we'll go to view, view options, uh, grid, we'll change the background. No, <laughs> it's um, in the 3D styles, that's what it is. And we'll bring this over, we'll change the ground color to white, and we'll go okay, and we'll go okay again. And what we actually need to do is change it so that it's an ISO there, but we also need to make sure that it's running off the internal engine. And let's see what that looks like, vectorial engine. So it's all clean. Mm. Interesting. Those pens are really thick. Let's update this one. Let's see what that looks like with the white. Oh, it's disappeared altogether. What's going on there? In source view. Ah, okay, it's changed. It's changed those views so that all of those have now got that 3D style. I'm following. The pens are too thick though. It's detracting from it. So what have we got the pen set to? One, and they're not that thick. So what's going on? Bring this one over, I'll bring it up. And then I'm just gonna go trace uh, background. All right, that's kind of cool. So we can lift it up from that component. I like that. 
Uh, let's update that base as well. It's probably going to disappear as well. Let's see what happens. No, it didn't. Okay. Okay. So when we when we scroll in, it's the, the lines aren't actually too bad. All right, that looks okay actually. We might need to tweak up the materials. So we'll take a look at the 3Ds first. We'll get the 3D set up, see what they look like. And then from there, I think we can start playing with the materials. So it all looks good when we've actually got the file published. Uh, let's go back to just our base isometric. Save this view and place it on layout. When we scroll in, the detail is perfect. But when we scroll out, it all starts to get a bit of a jumble. What if we rescale it? Let's have a look at what the size does to it. Actually, it's infinitely scalable. I don't even need to worry. Of course, it's just going to just get larger as we make it larger. Hmm. Starting to slow down a little bit though. Just uh, with the sheer amount of lines that it's probably taken into consideration in the Victorial engine. Let's get rid of that for the time being. Don't mind how these have come together. These look alright. I'm very keen to see what this will look like in Twin Motion. So let's go ahead, jump into Twin Motion. I've got the educational version open just so everyone can access it. This is what the UI looks like in the latest version. So let's go ahead and go import. We'll go to this one just here and we'll link it to uh, the 26 version. So everything prior to this had been modeled up, had been modeled up in Archicad 25. I've converted it to a 26 version um, just because uh, my the latest uh, EDU version I've been using is in 26. So let's just go import. And now let's go back to our Archicad file. We'll refresh. We'll go back in, it's linking. And from here, we'll right click and we'll go to zoom to selection. Ooh, oh yeah. That looks really cool. Uh, let's do media. Uh, let's create a new image from here. We'll just make a couple of small uh, tweaks and adjustments. Change the focal length to say uh, 50 off the bat. We'll zoom back out. Uh, that's looking cool already before I even do anything. Um, let's readjust this. Let's change the time of day, the environment. Uh, we want to change the location off the bat because this is going to be in Australia. HDI, we want location details. That's what we want. I'm going to pan on down until we get to the East Coast. I'm going to have a look at the North orientation. I'm going to put it right about here and let's change the time of day. Time of day. Oh man, oh, that's so cool. Now you're getting all the shadows and the fretwork. Let's go to down. By the time we start adding in some trees and we start getting some shadow going in there, it's going to look very, very cool. And with all this iron here, let's just go to the materials, just see what it looks like if we add in a more realistic uh, texture. Let's go to iron. We have no one there. So let's go through concrete glass, uh, metal. That's what we want. Gal galvanized steel. Let's see what that does for us. It's a bit more reflective. I kind of like the lighter color. Um, let's change the window materials. We'll go glass. Go clear glass. No, let's go opaque glass maybe. And yeah, frosted. Actually, for whatever reason, the blue tint, I don't mind that. Okay, so let's just uh, skip the materials for the time being. We'll just go back home. Oops, wrong home. Go back to library. We'll go vegetation, we'll go trees. And let's go. Where are the Aussie trees? I don't mind maybe an oak. Let's see what an oak looks like. Pan over, add a couple of those in. Oh, that's gonna look cool. Let's pan that over a bit. What I'd like, I'd like the um, trees to cast shadows over the, the top of this. So we might need ta uh, to change the time of day or the orientation. So let's go back to our media and then go time of day. And yeah, we're gonna have to change the north. So it's coming from that way. That's kind of cool. A bit of dappled light onto the structure. Yeah. All right, we'll play with that more next. Uh, let's go ahead and save and we'll come back soon. So let's pull back up our checklist, which just has a few little details left. A couple I've just added in. So I want to add in the gutter for the bullnose roof as well as the deck overhang. So the gutter should be pretty straightforward. We'll just copy the gutter profile that we've done for the first one. So to do this, we'll just go up to the roof, grab this, copy it and paste it on the ground floor. Just the bring it across to where the custom profile is there. We'll cut it and we'll bring it back up. We'll go paste in the original location. Go OK. Go into 3D and let's just bring it down so it's at the right height. Now it might start obscuring some of the detail that we've added in. So what we'll need to do, what we'll need to do, I'll bring it up say 120. I'll intersect the two of these. 
uh, because they're similar to other elements, they're cropping to other parts. So interesting. So we'll need to offset these at least say five mil or so. So let's get a five mil and five. Oh, that's the wrong one. Grab this one. We'll go say five mil and this one five mil. There we go. And if we just connect the two, then we should be sweet. Yep. All right, good. Let's see how that looks. Let's go back into the 2D and just see what the 2D representation looks like of it in the elevation. So it comes down to there. So we've got the fascia, then it goes to the roof. So we'll, we'll lift the whole roof up and we'll put the gutter and fascia just onto, on top of where uh, this top point is here. So I'll jump back up to the top and I'll need to grab the fascia as well. I'll bring this one down and over to here. Now I'll bring it out the width of the fascia. So it's 25 mil. So let's bring that one out, 25. Bring this one out, 25. Connect these two and we'll mirror this and then we'll connect it as well. Um, we'll line all that up in just a sec. We'll just go into the 3D and just get it so all the elements lined up correctly. Let's go into our 3D. Let's grab these and bring them down. Now, we'll want to set it up so that all of this is just above where this decorative uh, lattice is, just here, about there, yep. And then we'll want to select all these roofs, or the bullnose roof on there, as well as this one just over here. Yep, we'll bring that one up as well. Bring that down, say five, there we go. Let's zoom out, yep, that's looking good. Okay, so let's connect up the rest of the gutter just around the edge. Um, this would most likely have say um, a beam that would uh, go up or some kind of structure in, in behind. But in the section view, just on the plans, I don't think we have it. And it's not really gonna show up in the 3D. So we won't go into too much depth with it uh, with how it works in just behind the fascia. Um, let's just go and have a check. Yeah, so it, yeah, there we go. So it's got a beam just in under that the fascia would attach to. So um, we could show it, but um, since we're not really going to be doing a 3D cut through, it's it's not worth really detailing on this one. So we'll just stick to the gutter and fascia, which covers the element for the time being. And uh, we'll just do the rest of that now. So we've got that on the top floor. Let's go ahead and use the ground floor as trace reference. Go to our view map and go to ground floor. We'll go show as trace reference. And we'll bring that one. We'll turn off grouping so we can extend it. There we go, bring that one out, bring this one out as well. We'll grab both of these and then we'll mirror it on this corner just here. And then we can select both of these and connect. Oh, too many elements selected at once. So we'll select these two, connect those, then select these two just here and connect those. We'll grab the rest of these and we'll crop it just to this here because it's zero eve, so yep, that should have all that sorted. All right, let's do the same thing just for this one down here. So we're bringing it across. And now when I'm intersecting things, I'm not sure if I brought it up just a little bit earlier, but when I'm intersecting elements, I'm just using the intersect tool just up here. So this one just here. Uh, but I've got a shortcut set up so that I don't have to keep on moving the mouse just up to the top, top corner there. All right, let's mirror these across uh, while making a duplicate and we'll connect those and then we'll connect the fascia together. There we are. Oh, now don't forget to crop this little portion off here. That's the one. Cut, there we go. Beauty. All right, let's save. Just a little bit of progress that we've made just there. Let's go in, cool. All right, something's going on here at the moment where there's some elements that are colliding. It's creating a bit of a jittering effect, so. So to have a look in underneath. Okay, it might be the roofs. So what I'll do, I'll just select all of the bullnose roofs just again. Uh, and having things grouped is such a, such a time saver. Um, otherwise, just going through each individual element, it's a killer. Let's go operators and we'll make these roofs the target and we'll go subtraction with upper extrusion and execute. There we go. All right, all right, let's clean things up. There we go. All right, so let's go back to our checklist. And we've got gutter for the bullnose roof. So let's go confetti. There we are. Um, now deck overhang. If we go back to the plan, down to the floor plan, let's double click this one here. Um, there's just a little bit of an edge just over the side here. 
And I'd love to kind of show that little extra detail. So what I'll do, I'll select the deck. I'll just create a duplicate, say 500 mil across. Um, I'll go into 3D and just do this in the 3D space. It might just be a little bit more intuitive. Let's go 100 down. Um, and then we'll reduce this one in height. So it's just matching up with that. Then what I'll do, I'll just offset the edges so that it's say 75 mil overhang for that side, as well as say this one here. Now what I could do, I'll undo that actually, and I'll set it so it's all sides. And then I'll go, let's actually make it 50, 50 mil overhang. And then we'll just grab the two sides that we don't want overhang. These ones just here. So we'll bring those back and that will have all those edges done at once. Excellent. Now with all that done, we can bring this back in and say go 500, the dimension that we gave it before. And that gives us that little bit of an overhang on the deck. Now, the only thing is that's exposed our stairs a little bit. So what I might do, I might just push this in say the 50 mil. 50 mil, there we go. And then I'll just intersect this. So it's the target and the stairs can be the operator. And I'll just do subtraction and we'll go execute. There we are. All right. Now let's go back into the 2D and just have a look at the detail again. So it's a bit of a darker timber around the edge. So I might try and replicate that as well. So I'll go to the timber and I'll just go to unlock so that it's not linked. And then I'll just set this one so that it's slightly darker. I might say go to a golden beige, see what that looks like around the edge. It's a bit lighter than what I'm keen for. So let's just jump back in. Let's go Sienna Sand. See what that looks like. Oh, that's even lighter again. Hmm. I might even try it Walnut Walnut Horizontal. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a bit darker. It gives it a bit of a shadowy type detail. And let's see what, say, a pine might look like. Pine Horizontal. Hmm, I'm going to go back to the darker one just for the moment. Actually, I don't mind the oak. So I've just set up it as an oak there at the moment. So oak light. That seems to work. Okay. Just gives it that extra little detail. Let's go back into our 2D, double check it again. One thing I might just quickly investigate, I'll just select the doors that we've got here at the moment. I wouldn't mind trying to get those so that their detail, oh, this one here actually needs to get reduced. Let's pull that down to 2700 or 2400 even. There we go, that's better. Um, let's select these doors and I'd love to get it so that their faces have got a similar detail to what we've seen in the 2D. So we'll select all of them at just at the moment. We'll go into the door and we'll see if we can change the leaf settings. So it's something a little bit more aesthetic. So let's go into settings, then frame it and leaf. So I've just went into model attributes just as a little side tangent and I've changed it from uh, the MVO to full. So MVO uh, was basic there before, it all simplified like this. So I've just changed it to full there now. So as we adjust it, it should go to a high level of detail. I'm going to change it from say the pine, which is kind of textured there at the moment to the oak light. And I'm going to set it so that all the uniform, so I'm gonna set it so that all the surfaces are uniform. I might even try a sand beige, that might even suit. Mm, golden, golden beige actually works nicely. All right, so let's go to the leaf, which is down in door leaf, and we'll scroll through and see what we can find. I don't mind the look of this one just here, style 11. So we'll just go with that and we'll go okay and that will change all of our doors. Excellent. Let's check that out on the other side. Yep, it's worked for those as well. Fantastic. Let's go into our checklist. We've got our deck overhang, so let's tick that one off and get some confetti going. And next up is materials. So materials, we're relatively close as it is there at the moment. We could uh, play with, say, the weatherboard, see what kind of options we've got. Siding light, but I'm kind of leaning more towards the creamy tones for this particular structure. So I think we'll stick with this for the time being. And what I'm currently weighing up are two different kinds of 3D views. So the first one being sketch and sketch, the textures won't have as much of a play in this. Um, it's going to create almost a hand-drawn type of look in the 3D, which is very, very cool if you get all the settings tweaked just right. And after that, we'll jump in into twin motion and we'll have and we'll have a bit more of a play there. So. Let's kick off with the sketch. Let's go options and then go through to creative imaging. From here, we'll want to go to photo rendering settings. All right, so from here, I've actually got a scene that I've set up uh, previously. 
that I've imported in. So I've got it currently set to the sketch engine and I've got it called Arc Sketch 3. So it's just all these settings here. So if you go through and match each of these different settings, you should get a similar result, um, as well as these ones just down through here. Um, how your sketch turns out can also massively depend on the actual size of the, of the render itself. So um, definitely something to watch out for. Um, so I'll jump on in, I'll go to millimeters and I'm gonna go up to 120 for the resolution. And I'm going to link these two values and say go 400. Let's go 500. Yep, so that, that's almost 2K there at the moment. So I'm gonna leave that for the second and just adjust the 3D to something roughly how I'm keen to have it set up. I don't mind that. So I might even redefine this current generic perspective just over here. And now I'll go into my uh, axonometry axonometric uh, view. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and click render. Oof, that looks terrible, what's happened there? Okay, so <laughs> it's it's popped off of the setting that I'd set up before. So let's go back to that and the render settings have changed again. So I'll just go back through, I'll fix those up. Um, we'll go 120 and we'll say go 500. Yeah, that's what we're after. And let's go, <laughs> let's do that again. Uh, it's going to take a bit longer this time. It's a bit of a different system. The um, uh, sketch system. Okay, it's turned out kind of interesting. Hmm, not quite what I expected, to be honest. It's got a kind of an interesting aesthetic about it. What I might do, I'll go back into the 3D. I'm going to change the grass so that it's just a render. Just go render A. Might even zoom in a bit as well to say there. Let's see what kind of effect that has on it. Click on and let's see how she turns out. I've been a bit spoiled twin motion these days. Everything is just live and instant so you can see exactly what it's gonna look like. So uh, going back to where you actually have to click to render a single image is, um, yeah, feels a little bit like a step back, but the results that I can get in this, uh, I can really finally tweak and I've had some results which I've been pretty happy with in the past with the, the over sketch lines and everything else about it. So. Um, if we can just tweak a few things, I think we can get a pretty cool result. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Let's compare it to picture two. Yeah, we get a bit more detail when we've went in a little bit closer. We're losing a lot of the uh, the striping for uh, the bull nose. This current one that I've got set up though is a little bit more sketchy uh, inso insofar as it um, distorts the actual lines themselves a little bit more. So. I'm going to go back through and I'm just going to go ahead and import this number two one that I've set up just a little bit earlier. Again, you can just go through and copy these settings. We'll go into our final render and let's give this one a try. Okay, interesting. So that one's just finished up. A bit more accurate. Let's compare it to picture three. Yeah, you can see it, especially say in the stairs where in three it has a bit more distortion. I kind of like the hand kind of drawn look in number three though. As, a bit, as opposed to this one that we've just done. It's just a little bit dense here at the moment. So what I might do, I think we can get a better result if we increase the size. So I'll go ahead and I'll double this to a thousand and it's gonna essentially be 4K. And let's see what the difference in the lines look like after we render it. So let's go render. The tricky thing is it's gonna take even longer now because it's gonna do it at a higher resolution, but I think the results that we're going to get might be a little bit surprising. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, it's a vast difference. And if we say zoom in, yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. So check out that level of detail compared to say, if we go back to picture four, let's zoom in, everything becomes a blur. So the resolution can have such a massive difference. I think if we play that, if I think if we play with that just a little bit more, we can get a result that's gonna look really nice. What I might even do, I might go back to the sketch three, the more hand drawn, more distorted type look. And I'm going to go through and give that a render and see how that one turns out. But before I do that, I'm just going to go back into the 3D, uh, back into the 2D, sorry. And I'm just going to cut this deck so that I've got it sliced in a way that, uh, just want this top panel actually, I'll undo that uh, and redo that. So I might have been just doing 3D here. So we'll grab the snip tool and we'll just slice that. There we go. All right, now I'll just want to align the texture. 
So if we go into here, then we go to link to fill origin. Then from here, we should be able to adjust the way that the fill is directed. So if I turn this one this way, go into 3D. Ah, that's what we want. We want to document creative imaging, align 3D texture, set direction. That's what I want. So I'll go set direction and I want this one to be defined graphically. So I'll just go here and at say 45, I'll bucket that one up. I'm gonna try that again. Let's go into document, creative imaging. Let's go set direction. I'm going to go numerically and let's try it at say 45. We'll go, okay, still no luck. That's what I need to do. I just need to set it to 90 degrees. So I just did that one before. So I'll just go redo and let's do it for this one just here. So we'll go into document and we'll go in through to creative imaging, align textures, set direction. We'll click on our surface. If that one's 90, let's try this one at 180. Let's go 180, we'll go okay. There we go, nice. Now we've got the, uh, the, uh, the decking facing the right ways. I think it'll just add a nice detail to it all. Let's go to our isometric view and we'll zoom in nice and close. There we go. Let's go through to our sketch three, go to our size and we'll go to 1000 and have a resolution of say 100 and try that out. Let's go render. Oh, here we go. Yeah, much prefer how the, de uh, the decking is facing the right directions in this one. But the oversketch has really lost all the detail in the actual fretwork itself. So I don't think we'll end up going with this sketch style with the sketch style three. I think we'll just end up going with sketch style two. Even though I do prefer the stairs, I reckon the stairs look pretty cool. The, the deck and this just through here just loses too much detail. So let's just render that out. And then we're going to try something a little bit different. All right, let's check out and see how it's come up. Yeah, that's a bit better. So that's in the axiometric, but let's go through to say the perspective. Let's try it out in the perspective style, uh, a bit of a different angle. Let's try it say from a more of a person standing perspective than rather than say an aerial. Let's twist it around so we still get a bit of the detail of the doors. Let's close out of that. We'll zoom in. What we'll also do, we'll just go into creative imaging. Uh, view actually, go into view, 3D view options, 3D pro projection settings. We'll go into our view cone. Yep, yeah, we've got that set to 50, which is ideal. Um, when you go out a bit more like 120, it starts looking more like a GoPro where it's got that more fisheye lens type look. Um, and for uh, real estate, this is more ideal. So we'll go okay. And let's zoom in just a little bit more. I think that's looking pretty good. One more and let's right click and save you, place on layout. We'll place this one just here and we'll delete that. That's just my lazy way of creating a new 3D just here. And then let's go arc guide and we'll go uh, arc sketch two. We'll set the size. Let's reduce the resolution a little bit just so we can get it rendered done quickly. And we'll go render. Ooh, yeah, that looks kind of cool. Don't mind that. Yeah, let's come up a tree. Ah, that was kind of unexpected. And if we turn up the resolution, that's only that's only going to look better. So I quite like that, but I'd also like to see what it looks like in the sketch three style, where it's a little bit more loose hand. But what I'll do before that, uh, I'll need to, by the looks of things, I'll need to crop the, the ground to the stairs. So we get this kind of detail going on here. So I'll just go back into the 3D there for a sec, grab our stairs and we'll go connection, solid element operations, grab a mesh, as our, yeah, we'll make it the operator and we'll just go subtraction. There we go. So we'll go arc sketch three. Now we'll also do this for the deck. Let's go, let's make it the operator and we'll make the mesh the target just to mix things up. There we go. So that's cropped it. This time let's go back into our settings and we'll bump this up to say a hundred for the resolution. We're just gonna change our image resolution here and let's bump it up to say uh, 1000, which is similar to what we were doing before. Cool. 500, we'll link these two values together and then go 1000. Actually, let's make the height of it. We'll unlink it. We'll make this say 600 and we'll go apply render set. And let's go ahead and render. Oh yeah, that's come up a treat. That's our winner. Yeah, <laughs> I like the base. It's just a little rough 
almost hand sketchy just down through here with the stairs uh that's that's come up quite nice all right <clears throat> that's our that's our guy so what i'm going to do i'm going to save this and we're going to take this into photoshop so i'll just quickly save this into the renders folder we'll set this one as a png and we'll go save so from here what i'm going so from here what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the plan that we've been drawing off and i'm going to pull off all the details that we've got here at the moment the ground floor all the elevations so that we can use the page for the 3d that we've just created to do this we'll create a duplicate of it and we'll hide the original and we're just going to start going through and i'll show you how we're going to approach it so little details like this if we want to get rid of those we'll just right click and we'll go content or fill and because it's quite a large image and we've got a couple of different things open it might take a second let's see there we go so we can see in the preview on this right hand side just here this is showing us what it's going to look like after it's done so we'll just go okay and that one's just bid so we're going to go through and do a similar thing for all the different drawings we've got here so we'll do it for this elevation just here i'm going to see how much i can do at once let's see if i can also do it for this as well as this text here and this text just here so let's see if we can do one large block or if we're going to have to reapproach it and do it in multiple smaller blocks essentially the end outcome that i want is i want a blankish page that i can use the 3d on top of and i'm going to overlay it and we're going to get that kind of rustic old type feel and if possible i'm going to what have we got mm, no it hasn't worked out so see how it's a bit of a jumble there at the moment yeah it's all over the place so what we're going to have to do we'll just go cancel we'll deselect it and we'll just go through and do each of these individually so i'll just do this side elevation first go all the way there right click and i'll go i'll deselect these areas holding in control oh not control holding in alt to deselect areas that i don't want as part of this fill the content aware fill so these sections here as well as this one here here and yeah so let's take this and do the same thing we'll go content away fill there we go that's better so we can see in the preview that this time it's worked out so we'll just go okay and when we come back into this view and it's finished loading there we go and it's disappeared it's left behind a little bit of the chimney but that's all right we can come back and adjust that in a minute but what i might do i might just close out of uh, twin motion it might be taking up a bit of the ram at the moment and let's see if that helps out so we'll try and do just this small little area here content away fill that was much quicker so we'll go okay and let's go through and start removing some of these other details there we go much quicker now i just literally closed out of <laughs> um the pdf viewer and twin motion and it's so much quicker there already so always worth closing out other programs if things are starting to stutter a little bit there we go go okay We'll do it for this front elevation. So that pretty much leaves us, I reckon we can get it done in one, two, three, four. Four more passes, uh, five. I reckon five more passes and we'll have that done. And then we'll have a blink page that we can import the view that we just created onto. And we're going to flip it from normal to multiply and see how that looks. And we'll try a couple of other things like linear burn, dodge, all that kind of stuff. And we'll just have a bit of a play around. We'll grab that and we'll add to the selection holding shift so we can create more selection in Photoshop just by doing that. A couple of little um, shortcuts like that can save you a bunch of time. Go, okay. It really is magic the tool can do on some things. It's, I still find it impressive. All right, let's select all this one just here. Right click, content, where fill. Adobe Acrobat, that's what I was, what I had open as well. Adobe Acrobat and uh, Twin Motion. So just closing out of those, what a difference. That's one more done. And this way, not that I know how it works, but I think it's got more source material to draw from when it's doing the content aware fill. Whereas when we tried to do it before, it's trying to do too much in one go. So breaking it down into these smaller parts can be kind of handy. It's fun to see the little details like this hand-drawn um, roof sketch just underneath the text here. The text itself is a bit tricky to read, running writing. I think they still teach running writing these days, but uh, yeah. I don't know why it's so hard to read there's a certain beauty about it but i mean language is kind of more utilitarian in some aspects i guess not to get too philosophical but if you can't read it then you can't understand someone if what's the point of language if you can't understand someone Go okay and that just leaves us with this last little one just here let's select around 
this one all the way around through here. Just take that off, giving it as much information to work with as possible. Right click, content aware fill. We'll go OK. Hey, and we have a blank rustic looking page. I'm very happy with that. Looks very cool. And we've got the original here too, so we can draw assets and elements from it as well. So that's no stress. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and save, and we'll get right back into it. All right, so I've just saved the Photoshop file. Now I'm going to drag the render that we just created in ArchiCAD just before. I'm going to drag it into Photoshop. Can I drag it in place document? Because the current document has input only color profile. Oh, what does that mean? So after a little bit of a Google, I've just come back and we just go to edit and we go convert to profile. And from here, we change our destination space. So for this one, I'm going to go working RGB, sRGB. Go okay, there we go. Did a little bit of a flicker there for a second. Let's grab our drawing, bring it in, and hey, there we go. Nice. Oh, it should be a good resolution there by the looks of things too. So if we just press this just here, that should place our drawing. Nice. Yeah, this is going to be so cool. All right. All right. So from here, let's check out and see what it looks like when we apply. Oh, 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 oh. oh that looks so cool. Wow. That is so cool. And that's just the render that we've come up with so far. And we only spent like half an hour, if that, uh, going through and tweaking. If we went through and really pulled out multiple views and yeah, oh gosh, we could do some cool stuff. Um, so multiplier looks pretty good. Let's just have a look through the other settings. Uh, linear burn looks quite nice as well. I really like that. Ooh, exclusion kind of almost gives it like a blueprint type of view. That's kind of cool. Divide is kind of funky. It's like a white pencil type thing. I love going in and playing in Photoshop like this. And luminosity is kind of cool too. But I think so far, either multiply or actually linear burn. Linear burn looks the coolest, I reckon. Let's go with that. So let's scale this down just a little bit. Bring it up just so that it fits within the bounds of our page. And just to give it that little bit of authenticity, that extra authenticity, what I reckon, what I reckon we should do is we should add in some text. So if we go into text, let's type in pers perspective perspective view and from here let's drag that one so it's roughly centered uh, if we can give it some lines i reckon that'll look kind of cool too to be more reminiscent of the previous set so let's go into here draw a line from here across holding in shift so that it stays straight let's change it to no fill I'm just go black we'll go stroke we'll go stroke and we'll make this one say 10 and we'll have the stroke so that it's outside box. That, yep, there we go. So it just has a little underline there. Let's change it so it's larger. Oh, not that large. Bring it down. I have to type it in. Let's go, say, five. Nope. Let's go to 10. Double that. 10 looks good. Uh, let's take both those and see if we can put those to linear burn as well. What I might even do, I'll try and re replicate the color that we've got for the rest of the drawing just here. So for the text, what I'll do, I'll go into the text, select all, and I'll go color, and then I'll pick up this line just here. Okay, because it's linear burn, it's not picking it up quite the same. So I'll just go, okay, I'll turn linear burn off, and I'll just put, put it back to normal. Yeah, I don't think the gray is working out quite as well. So let's just zoom back out, perspective view. Let's draw the color from, say, one of the darker blues. So I'll go text, select all, color, and select one of these darker blues and go, okay. Let's just change our line as well. We'll zoom in, turn it off linear burn back to normal and we'll select it and we'll change it to this color as well. Uh, let's duplicate that line and make it a little bit smaller and underneath just so it's reminiscent of the plans that we had just before. There we go. And let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's turn that to say seven. Let's go to seven, maybe even a six. Yep, six works. Let's bring that up. I'll just use the directional keys just to do some fine adjustment, position, give you. Yeah, cool. Really happy with how that's turned out. All right, let's save that. <clears throat> we'll go save and we can export that as a PNG. Now within the render settings, what we could even do, now that we've got all this set up, we can adjust things even further. So for the shadows, I might even turn the shadows a bit darker. And if I go into this frame just here, let's see how that looks. Don't mind that. Darkness, I might turn darkness up a little bit, turn thickness back down to what it was. I don't mind the idea of having a little bit darker shadows, so let's go a little bit darker again. Cool. All 
All right, let's render that out and see how it looks. I think it'll just give us a bit more stark contrast between the different elements. And they're pretty clear as they are at the moment. So at that high resolution, when we bring that in, I think the darker shadows might look really cool on that kind of weathered background of the page. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks, oh, that's gonna look, oh man. All right, I'm gonna save that. Call that page, call that a picture 11. We'll go save, go into Photoshop. And since we've got all the setup at the moment, we can just turn that one off and we'll bring this one in. We'll place it, we'll reduce it in size just a bit. So it fits within our boundaries and we'll place it. Now let's see how it looks when we go linear burn. Let's compare it to our other one. Yeah, I kind of don't mind the darker shadows. I might take out this part here though. I think it's a little bit distracting. So I'll just select this part of the drawing just here and I'll create a layer mask. So that I'll crop that out there. Cool, so we've got the sketch style. So we've got the sketch style done now. Next up, let's move back into twin motion and see what we can do with that. All right, so we've got our twin motion file open back up. This one here, let's relink our ArchiCAD file. This one we were working on a little bit earlier, uh, but we don't have the gutters and all the other little details that we've added in. So we'll go back to our ArchiCAD file and I'll just save these render settings here just before I do go. And it's actually pretty quick and easy to do this and well worthwhile. So you don't have to reset up everything over and over. So we'll go store as, and I'll call this arc sketch four. I'll go store and we'll go okay. And from now you can just go back and through and it's got all of these different settings that we've just set up there before, all set up so that we don't have to do it all again. So let's quit out of that, go back into our 3D. And from here, we'll just resync with twin motion. So if we go back into our twin motion file here now, there we go. Um, now I'm going to change the uh, this here back to grass, just so it's gonna look better in twin motion minimize yeah way better and what i'm also going to do now is i'm going to have it so that this is much larger so let's turn off the crop so we've just cropped it to the bottom that's all right <clears throat> so let's uh, using the pet palette select offset all edges we'll make this much larger there we go let's go update that's going to update it in twin motion for us as well and this is going to get it so that we can start placing in trees and different elements so we can kind of frame the dwelling and uh, give it a more aesthetic look in this view just here. All right, let's reposition things a little bit and to say, let's do it so it's similar to the perspective that we did in sketch style and compare the two styles. I think that'll be a fun way of doing it. All right, let's create a new view. And from here, let's create some grass. So we'll select this surface. We'll want to go to populate, foliage. We'll go scatter. We'll go grass and flowers. Uh, let's select some dry glass, dry grass, some wild grass. We'll have those ready there in a second. We'll go back to populate. We'll drag in wild grass as well and a dry grass here as well. So with these three selected, let's go to the scatter tool and just put it onto our ground. Let's do another one, get the density up a little bit. Just go back to our perspective. Yeah, nice. And zoom, as we zoom in around and through, it'll show how that grass is actually looking. What I might do, is I'll just select the scatter that we've done and I'll just erase a little path just down the center through here. So it's down a little bit and create a little bit of a path. I noticed this in the um, architecturals that they've got a little uh, dirt path down through here. If I could replicate it, I think that'd be a nice little detail, but let's see what's involved. Let's go back to populate and we'll go to paint. Let's see if we can put some uh, borders in just along through here for the path. Let's go long grass border. Drag this one in, we'll go paint, and we'll paint this one in just through here. Oop, that's not gonna work for us. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and give up on that idea for the time being. I think it's a bit of a time hole, and I'll, I'll learn one day. I think it'd be cool, but if we could achieve that at some point. But the main focus is the actual dwelling, not the other little uh, things around it, and sometimes it's best off, let's just cut our losses. Um, Cool. So next up is some trees. Let's get some trees in so we can start framing the shot. I'll adjust the shot a little bit here at the moment. Yep, there we go. Now let's go back to our trees. What have we got here? This is a turkey oak. I don't mind the look of the turkey oaks. So let's go back in through. Let's go oak. Now we've got some red oaks as well. Red oaks might go all right, but let's just stick with turkey oaks for the time being. 
Oh no, the chimney. What are we doing? Got a tree coming out of the chimney there at the moment. It's kind of a curious look, kind of cool. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's get some more trees in there. I think this will be the advantage of the twin motion is the foliage and getting a realistic look at how it's going to look beforehand. Dappled light. Oh, whoops. Some dappled light onto the deck and just into the front too. Let's see how the view looks. Yeah, that bit of dappled light goes all right. Might make it a little bit further out, but let's zoom up and pull that one out to about there. Let's go back to our view. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, we haven't got much variation in the height and sizes there at the moment. It looks a little bit generic. So let's lower this a couple of these down. So it's just not quite distracting from the from the roof itself. I might fill in some of these sections here with uh, some alternative shrubbery. So let's go and have a little look through and see what we've got to choose from. Vegeta vegetation, let's go some bushes. Uh, base bush, what's this one like? You can use that. Yeah, add those in. I might add in some base bush ones just in behind here, just to fill it in a little bit. I'll get some rocks going in as well. Got a nice big rock, almost that kind of asteroid type of look. Let's check out our view. Uh, you can't really see the rocks in there at the moment. Let's check one in there. It's quite rugged. I had a couple in the background just here. I can't really see them particularly there at the moment. I'll reduce that down a little bit. Might play with the lighting a little bit and maybe even some effects. So let's go back into media. That's what we want, media. Select our frame and we'll have a play with the time of day. Don't mind that. So I'll just add in a new view for that one there. That's a recent old one. We'll roll with it. I'll see if we can add in some effects. Let's see if any filters might do it justice. I always like flicking through them. The blueprint's kind of cool, but we haven't got as much detail as what we just created before with the sketch. So that's why I don't typically go to it. All the ballpoint, it's yeah, not really usable for our purposes, or even the eight like the bit. That's not too bad actually. Um, the hidden line. I'm surprised with. Yeah, that's come up all right, actually. I might even create a duplicate of that and come back to that. I'll render that one out and see how that one looks. Um, but let's keep going through. That's not what we were looking for. Render line two, I think that looks even better than render line one. So let's create another one. Let's go through. Yeah, I think that's closer to what we were keen for was uh, light line. Light line goes all right. Just gives a bit of an edge around everything. So if we turn that off, yeah, it's pretty subtle, but I don't mind it. Just to, yeah, kind of outline what's going on. Um, now we've got our grass. What I might do is I might change the tint just so it's a bit greener, a bit more lush. Let's turn the dryness back a bit. Okay, okay. I'll select all the grasses, see if we can edit all of them at the same time. Turn the dryness way down. Yeah, that goes all right. It's getting closer, but it's not quite there yeah tricky thing is there's always more refinements we can do and i think we're pretty much 80 percent of the way there at the moment um don't get me wrong that last 20 percent can make a massive difference but i think what we'll do we'll stick with this we'll render it out in a minute go clear glass that's about right um yeah so we'll get it to a point where we'll just render it out we'll put it in and we'll see what it looks like with overlay of the older plans uh, because we might be doing a lot of stuff a lot of work at the moment that mightn't be seen in the final result. So um, let's see what it looks like with another filter on there. We'll create a new one. There's a couple of filters I don't mind playing with. Uh, not filters so much, but color gradients. Oh yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's that's a cool tint. And that's the first one I clicked on. All right, so I'll, I'll get out of that one and let's have a bit of a playthrough and see what we got. Yeah, that gives a bit more character. Wow. What a difference the color can make. Gosh. Mm, yeah, we've got a lot of different a lot of different ones that we're going through here at the moment. That's not too bad. Yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, let's keep going through. That's also quite nice. I'll select a couple here just so I can go back through and compare them apples for apples. We'll keep on scrolling down. I, I love how many different options they've got here for us. Um, that one gives almost a silhouette-ish type perspective on it. I don't know how I'm going to choose between them all now <laughs> by, the, by the time we get to the end of all these different colors, what a difference. It's kind of cool, more sepia. Oh, that kind of looks rustic too. That almost looks like an ELD time photograph. But I wouldn't mind, I know I'm getting distracted here, but I'll see if we can find something in the libraries um, 
to see if I can find something that gives it a bit more depth, a bit more character, maybe like an old bike or something like that, um, or two bikes, just so it can you can imagine characters within the scene itself. Gosh, they've got so many colors here to choose from. I think I'm just going to have to stick with that. I'll go through and choose one of these that I've just gone through and done. I think I'm ooh, I'm almost leaning towards that. It's uh, more desaturated, I think, is why it's kind of drawing my eye. Um, that one's not too bad either. Again, it's desaturated and gone to more of the creamy tones. I don't mind that. It kind of blows these out a little bit, but yeah, I'm almost leaning towards that at the moment. So let's go back. Oops, 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 oops. We'll get out of that. Go back to our library, we'll go to objects and we'll see what we've got to play with. Musical instruments, have we got some kind of old guitar we can put somewhere? No. Uh, let's go back to library and see if we can search BYC old bike. Yeah, All right, let's see if we can find a cool old bike. We've got so many cool libraries to draw from now. Uh, now these you'd have to download, so I couldn't be bothered doing that at the moment. So let's just go ahead and see if we can pick up one of these hybrid uh, man bike let's go that let's chuck that one in and let's see if we can rotate it so that it's on the ground like when you run home from school and you're just excited to eat all the snacks you just kind of throw the bike down let's pan on over and this one up panning down a bit more yeah no one will probably notice or ever see this detail <laughs> oh, but i think it's a bit of a fun detail we'll keep it in there all right let's see how it looks in the view yeah no one will ever see that <laughs> Uh, if you do see it and you've watched the whole way through, please comment below that you saw the bike. Um, I think that'd be a fun little detail. Um, okay, so let's go export. We'll go to image and we're going to do this one as a PNG just after I make sure that I'm still recording. Yep, I'm going to stop this one and restart a new one. Where were we? Ah, we're going to take this into Photoshop and we need to publish it. So PNG, uh, we want to select the images that we want to export. So we'll go to image. We'll select both of these just as an experiment, as well as our last one and the second last one and this third last one as well. So let's take those and we'll start an export. So we'll go into renders and we'll go select folder. And that's going to start exporting all of those. And in twin motion is so quick. It's so much quicker compared to the line in Archicad, which I know unfair comparison between the two. This is like a dedicated uh, rendering system, whereas ICAD has all the other features that they have to juggle at the same time. But yeah, I'm a bit spoiled now with twin motion. So let's crack open our Photoshop file and let's turn this one off, this one we created earlier. And we'll start dragging in some of the other ones that we created. Let's start with the similar type uh, filter from uh, twin motion. We'll place this one in and see how it looks. Yeah, that's not too bad. I don't mind that. Um, let's see how it looks when we start doing the, oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, that kind of looks cool. Oh, that looks like a ELD photograph with, with all the, yeah, patina, all the texture coming through from the paper really adds something to it. I dig that. Um, the text and everything here at the moment, I think we need to adjust that just so that it does something more for us. Yeah, I think that subtraction, I think subtractions or difference. Yeah, difference is better. For this one in particular, yeah, I think that looks kind of cool. Oh man, that's gonna be hard to beat. That looks that looks very, very cool as it is. And I'm curious if it's actually going to make an impact on the other ones, even though they've had the color filter put through. So let's see what it looks like. So that's number one. Let's bring in my current favorite and we'll see how that flies. A contemporary render. And we'll put this one into our file. We'll go place. That looks pretty cool as it is, just being on the page. But let's see how it looks. Let's see if, yeah, not bad. Let's go through all of our different options. Yeah, kind of cool, kind of weird, kind of different. Not as blown away, if I'm to be honest, uh, with what I'm seeing here at the moment. Hmm, luminosity. Let's just select that and go between the two. After a bit, I don't mind that too much. It's kind of cool. So luminosity is in the lead so far. Luminosity or maybe even multiply. Multiply is pretty basic, but it does give that bit of grunge. So I think multiply kind of goes a treat. So let's compare that back to our other one that we did to kick off with. Hmm, it's hard to pick a favorite now. That almost looks like a like a more of a hand sketch that's actually been done. And this one's almost like a in between a photograph and a render and a hand sketch. So 
it's in a bit of a awkward space in between. Um, now we had one similar to this that we'll chuck in there and we'll see how it turned out. So this is without the shading. This is more so just kind of line work style. We'll drop this one in. So let's just turn on the other one real quick just to see the difference. Uh, we'll turn that one off and turn that one on. So yeah, see, see how that one has the shadow. So we'll turn this one here back on and let's do linear burn. I just like how we've got the star contrast between the dark and the light. That's kind of cool. I don't mind that. Gosh, how, how will I choose between all of these? I'll put them up on my Instagram or somewhere and I'll, I'll um, put up a poll, see what people prefer. What, what's the favorite? I might have to change the aspect ratio of it just so it's in a square format. Um, might even check it up on YouTube or Instagram, all those different places. Um, anywho, let's see what some of these other colors look like. I don't mind that, that looks cool. Let's go ahead and bring in this really more drastically darker looking one. I'm holding in shift while we're scaling it just so it keeps it keeps its proportion as well. One thing to watch out for in Photoshop. Already, I don't mind the look at this. I don't mind the look at this. Let's go. Mm, looks kind of rustic. Let's go through all the different filters, all the different ones. Yeah. Let's just stick with multiply, I think, for this one. Multiply. Yeah, multiply. So that's it there with it much darker. I, don't, I think we lose a bit of the detail and a bit of the clarity as compared to say this one here. It does have a bit more of a style about it though. Yeah, it's kind of cool. What we can do with just three programs, Photoshop, ArchiCAD and Twinmotion. I think honestly deserves a bit of confetti. I think that's pretty cool. How far we have come, how far we've come. All right, one more, and then I'm going to call it a wrap. This is literally the longest video I've ever recorded for anything in my entire life. Um, but it's been a cool experiment. I've, I've enjoyed it. It's been a bit of fun. Mm. Yeah, that one looks all right. Let's go multiply. That goes a tree. Now we can check off these ones here. Check, check, and a bit of confetti. Let's minimize this one here. Ah, now some other cool things we could have done, notable mentions for interesting ideas, potentially in the future. If anyone actually, if, if anyone sees this and they're keen to check it out, um, I think it would be cool if we were to take a cut through of the building, say like this, and if we were to detail like the interior of it, um, uh, not particularly that plain. Let's take that and shift that out a bit, finalize. Yeah, so, something like that and actually detail in the, the fireplace and do a cut through, have your peers and all that kind of stuff. I think that'd be a bit of fun, but I think, yeah, the audience would be limited and how helpful it would be, I don't know. But I might come back to it. But that's just a bit of an idea for maybe down in the future. I'd be interested in doing an isometric uh, cut through. So you cut through from the top. Whoops. Uh, let's undo. I'll actually redo. Got to turn on the cut plane. But we'll take this one and we'll put it in the bin. Um, yep, there we go. Uh, readjusted. Um, so we'll take the top cut plane. We'll put it down through here, we'll go finalize. So you'd have that and then you'd overlay the top one on top of it um, and do maybe do it in a sketch style. But the aerial sketch styles, I don't think worked at, out as well as the standing styles uh, for this project. Might be something worth coming back and playing with. Um, I might do it. We'll see how popular this, this video goes. But at the moment, I think this might be like a three hour video. Let's see what makes it through to the cut.